fished with the sewer of this place. Yeah. Oh, cannabis, oh. our home and native grass. All right. Momentous day, I'll tell you. So many things. This is like the uh, demarcation day. It's like D-Day. You know, so many areas of our lives. I'm looking out my window. I'm seeing like thousands of people out there just stoned out of their uh, on their ass. Oh, lucky you! They got the uh, the Globe and Mail rolled up. They're smoking it. They're puffing on it. Anybody believe it? No. I will say this much though: we don't have like uh, 20 feet of rain on the ground. Boy, <laughs> I feel so bad for you guys. Just flooded out. When in doubt, great if you have a canoe. So where the hell do we start? We've got so much. Now, yesterday I gave you the lowdown, and probably some of you uh, doubting Thomases and uh, Tom, Tom's Dixon Harry's out there didn't uh, believe me when I told you there were big changes coming. And, of course, we were sworn to secrecy because it always has to be a little bit on the childish side of QA, and we always have to, like, pacify everybody as opposed to just saying, okay, this is the way it is. But we want to personally thank, which is way out of character for me, of course, we want to personally thank Muff Lindsay, Clarence, don't call me Josh Darrow. Yes. Who's still desperate to get in, uh, laid. And even Greg Reed. Don't we want to thank Greg Reed? No. Well, a little bit. Of course, he's the one that screwed it up in the first place. But nevertheless, when nice, you see nice the recovery. error of your ways, uh, it's never too late to repent. And he repented. And so this is our last 9 to 1 show on WQAM. Oh, oh hallelujah. God, and it's the last time we'll ever cross over back to back with a Mo Man and Gildy. I mean, isn't there something we want to say special about that? <laughs> I'm getting pounded. Oh, there is something so great about it. That two-hour separation is going to be so sweet. At least in the beginning, it's going to be a two-hour separation. I have I don't want to speculate on the year because I have my own theories about how long that's going to last, how many days that's going to last the new schedule. About 30, man. But, huh? <laughs> what? Yeah, you heard it. No. When I hear that, I just want to fart. Yeah, me too. <laughs> But, uh, cause I have a feeling we may have like a longer, uh, gap. You know, like between six and ten, like four hours. Well, I'm thinking that Mo and Gildy three to six would be good. Don't you think? What? So here's our poll from, now what, what am I missing? I must Nothing. be missing Nothing. I just, I feel like we should mark, this, since this is the last nine o'clock hour, like we, we should mark it somehow or do something. And don't forget, know. starting tomorrow, like I said yesterday, I gave you a little sneak preview, then we bring back all that good stuff like... It's the one to two hour. Oh, hallelujah, and our all-time favorite. It's the one to two hour. <laughs> yeah, the great Mitch Lewis, who gave us... Oi. And also... Wrecked him. What more could you want, huh? Oh, I know. 1,037 votes on the poll yesterday. What's your take on Neil going back to 10 to 2? And I see probably some people assume that that was like uh, still speculation on my part. Well, here it is. It's in the uh, Tom Jicka column this morning. It's amazing. Somebody must have bought Tom a little radio. One of them little transistor sisters. Sure hope you don't get no blisters. Pharrell, new voice of morning commute. We'll get to that. And, of course, very jackass who got the straight poop right from uh, Greg, from a close personal buddy. I wonder if they have like a big, um, what do they call those tubs? Like a hot I, tub? I have one. Huh? A, yeah, a, a hot tub. Jacuzzi. A big jacuzzi that they hang out together while Greg, while uh, Barry massages Greg's ego and Greg uh, spills the beans or, sp <laughs> or something. <laughs> oh, spills the wine. What a grotesque thought that was. 
Anyway, uh, Barry, of course, is the direct pipeline, as Greg is the mole. He's always running around. Who's the mole? Well, you're the mole, Greg. Everybody knows that. You've got a big mouth. And Barry Jackass is your conduit. And so Barry's got his big column about the new change, the lineup change. And we're going to be doing another poll on what's your take because we actually uh, are going to, like, list the whole thing for you. Oh, did I do the poll result? No. No. What's your take on Neil going back to 10 to 2? We asked yesterday. 1,040 votes. I'll listen to whatever. 489. 47 percent. That's our almost half of this audience that's so loyal, and we love them from head to toe, that if we're on, like, at any time, if they have to stand on their head, if they have to listen on a pop-up toaster, if they have to get a goddamn hearing aid to hear the show, they'll still listen. They'll do whatever it takes, and we love them just dearly. I get pustules on my posterior. Isn't that how you say it? <laughs> just thinking about it. Let's see. What's your take on going back to 10 to 2? I love it. 409, 39.3 percent. You put those two together and you got like an overwhelming majority. It's okay. Another 93 said it's okay. 8.9 percent, which leaves the other 49, 4.7 percent who said they hate it, which there got to be. I mean, if you put any category on any pool, we hate it. There got to be those, right? Always? Always. You see, this is what happens, Mo, when you alienate everybody in the building and when you piss everybody off and they hate you like poison. And even though you had that little blip in that last uh, book, the trend comes out at 1 o'clock this afternoon. So tomorrow morning we'll actually have some numbers to talk about. Wow. All right. Yeah. Talking about killing some good time, huh? Because between the combination of everybody being out of town, I heard the Humper yesterday talking about how it was the slowest show in the history of his life. He can't remember a day that was slower. So I was taking it personal yesterday, and this was business, and I was sitting here taking it personal. And blaming George for driving the audience away. Well, George did a fine job while I was away. Well, <laughs> it was pretty good. That's that's what Beaner Boy, Boner Boy said. He said it was uh, not too bad. He said he had a lot of good crank calls. All of our favorite cranks called. So here's the new lineup. Now, Hank announced it yesterday. I'm not too sure that they really gave it its uh, due yet this morning on the Mo and Gildy show. I was asking Beaner Boy because I didn't get to hear too much of it. But I don't think that uh, they really gave it its due. Do you? No. I don't know. Here's the new lineup, effective tomorrow, Thursday, May 29th, a day that will live in infamy. Oh! Yeah. On WQAM. Finally, something's happening, you know. That's something we think that's going to be pretty good. That's all I do. I just want to cop a feel. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Here's the new lineup. Mo and Gildy, according to Tom Zick. I love that one line, Tom. Tom, I think you redeemed yourself today a little bit. I'll read Tom's column. It's short, right? Right. Pharrell, new voice of morning commute. All sports radio WQM is shaking up its lineup to squeeze its newest edition, Scott Pharrell, into morning drive time. Starting Thursday, tomorrow, the gravelly-voiced Pharrell, who's been filling in on various shifts the past couple of weeks, will host a new program, 8 to 10 a.m. You got that? 8 to 10 a.m. Write these down now. That may, Well, let me just go on. To accommodate the change, Neil Rogers returns to the 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. shift he prefers and the incumbent morning host, Howard David and Steve Goldstein, are being pushed deeper into the night. Their new starting time. <laughs> Their new starting time is 5 a.m. Let me just read that last part again. The incumbent morning host, Howard David and Steve Geldy Goldstein, are being pushed deeper into the night. Their new starting time is 5 a.m. Pharrell is a former nationally syndicated host with a frat boy style, heavy on drinking, <laughs> discussions of bodily functions and sex. This should make him more compatible with Rogers than David, the play-by-play -play, uh, play voice of the Dolphins, is. Pharrell, whose resume includes hockey play-by-play, -play, would be a prime candidate for the Panthers job if and when that comes uh, opens up again. Oh, I bet you Gildy's really upset now. Not just having to get up an hour earlier in the morning, but also, uh, he, you know, he was just right on Jugs McDonald's back. He was right on a Jug Meister's ass, hovering over his shoulder, just waiting in the wings. And now, of course, uh, we got a guy who has actually experience. Not good, but has experience. The WQM changes also will entail former Dolphin uh, Jim Mandage sliding back an hour to 2 to 4 p.m., followed by Hank Goldberg, 4 to 7. I'm going to tell you, this, <laughs> this Humper man, I've taught him well. I have really, he owes me big time. He owes me a couple of meals. Because when we first came to the station, he was a cantankerous, surly, frustrated guy, screaming at everybody, having a nervous breakdown, frustrated by the Greg Reed School of Broadcasting, and, and rightfully so. And I came in and bitched him out big time and mellowed him out and added years to his life. And, that, and I also taught him and the Mad Dog a very valuable lesson. The one thing you strive for at QAM is less work and more pay. Right? All right. That's what we strive for on QAM. In fact, now 
This show has the distinction we are now the only four-hour show on this radio station. What a now, Eddie joke. K is Eddie K is on 10 to 2, but that's like uh, once in a blue moon. Right. When there's no ball games. For example, like uh, tonight. Well, it says here tonight, but that's not going to happen because we got that double header weather permitting. <laughs> what? Weather permitting. Now, do we have a new schedule? I, I, I noticed... I noticed Miss Muff was in there uh, patting herself on the back and very late, uh, about 8.58, interfering with my enjoyment of our final crossover with Mo. But uh, it would be nice if we had a schedule, especially since we got all this new stuff starting tomorrow. So like I told you yesterday, this new change affects every show on the station except for uh, the ball games at night in Eddie K. It affects Joe and Mark overnight because now they're cut down an hour. Instead of 2 to 6 overnight, they're going to be on 2 to 5. So they're down to a three-hour show. And then you got Mo and Gildy, 5 to 8. Now, stop and think about this. When it requires at least 25 minutes to, well, what's the term you use to tease the hair in your piece? Well, I mean, what do you do blend, with it? You blend it with the, you blend uh, it? your real hair with the uh, glue on. Get out of here. What real hair? The one on the sides. I see. The gray ones on the sides that right, don't match right, the, the red temple, muscrat right, ones the in the middle. Hair and the one in the back. Well, I'm, but I'm saying it takes at least 25, 30 minutes in the morning after assuming right. he does the three SHs, the shower, the shave, <laughs> and the Schmidt, and uh, and then blends all the hair in there. So you were talking latest 3 o'clock in the morning rising time for a guy who's a fast approaching 70. He says and, he's in his 50s. Yeah. Well, he left, a few, he left a few years off. About 30, man. Yeah. <laughs> he left a few off in his calculations. So not that I don't want to sound like we're gloating at the fact that these people are being like pushed back into what does Jika say? Pushed deeper into the night, <laughs> like into obscurity. I mean, it's like kind of like let me help you toward the door, okay? It's time to like uh, go to the door. Let me give you a little helping hand and push you, shove you as fast and hard as I can out that door, okay? Now, once we get into the very jackass article where he talks, uh, Greg Reed talks about the 22 months that Howard has left on his contract and he will be on during that period of time, et cetera, and so on, which I find. <laughs> Most amusing because there are unspoken words there too. In other words, they'd love to get him out of there, but they have no, they haven't found a way to do it. So one of the easiest ways is to shove him back, as Jika says, pushing them deeper into the night. Oh, what a, what a great choice of words, little Tommy. Always like that, Paul Hitted Jicky, you know what? He's had a few weak moments along the way, but he's a good guy. <laughs> little, little Tommy Jicka. Huh? He means well, doesn't he? He's yeah. a lazy little, he's a lazy little squirt, but he's, he's not a bad guy. 913 at 560 WQAM. If you're fat, and boy, a lot of us are, man, oh man, there's nothing worse than skinny people talking about fat and about dieting because they don't know crap. What do they know from fat? But when a fat person like me tells you about it, because I've been through all the frustrations of losing and gaining and gaining and losing and more gaining, and it just, it's a lifelong battle. It never ends. If you haven't tried balance for life yet, you really owe it to yourself to do it because we've been talking about it for a long time and many, many of our people in the audience and some of our acquaintances too, like Jeff Cohen, have lost a crap load of weight with balance for life because it's the easy way. And if you're like mindless, it's even better because you don't have to make any decisions. There's no cooking, no shopping, no cleaning, no worries, no calorie counting, not even any carbohydrate counting because they deliver all your food for the day right to your dough by six o'clock in the morning. We're at your home, at your orifice, wherever you are. Three delicious gourmet meals, two delicious snacks are all in your little black sack. That's the key to your weight loss is your little black sack. And in your sack, like I said, everything is fresh and delicious. There's nothing frozen, nothing prefabricated, nothing with a bunch of chemical crap or additives. It's all the best ingredients that money can buy. The only choice you have to make is when you fill out your weekly menu. And you get to choose between two alternatives for each meal and snack every day that you're on the program. So lose the weight, watch it just pour off your body the easy, delicious way, and you'll be satisfied, not desperate and starving to death when you go with Balance for Life. Give it a try. you got nothing to lose but all that disgusting, unhealthy fat. Call Balance for Life today, 954-568-3229. 954-568-3229. Or check them out on the Wicked World Wide Web at balanceforlife.com. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAQAM. No. Will Chamberlain rate me? Well, congratulations. Get a life. All right. You can have or you can pack away. Since we're eating today, the oily boys buffet. Grab those tongues. And flip the photo around as if a diamond could be found underneath the tray. But don't forget who's paying the bill and in whose food you're gonna be. The dying. Save the, the last fish for me. 
The food is tasty and the price is low. Oh, I love for thanks so much. My favorite thing of all is when I go, I love to fondle and to touch. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. If you eat too yes, fast, you could get bad yes, gas when it's time yes, to go. Yes, I know. The food is soft. Food is soft. Take some red or green yellow, macaroni and food cheese. Steal some sweet and food roll. Food is soft. But don't forget who's paying the bill and in whose booth you're gonna be. So darling, save, save the, the last fish for me. It's our time. It's our time. It's our time. It's our time. Save. Nine eighteen at five sixty WQA. Maybe the old people are like up to their uh, dentures in water. What do you think? <laughs> they don't need the glass then. Exactly, you don't need the glass with your pollen. In fact, just take a take a swig of pollen and just walk outside would be a real good idea. Look at all the things you can accomplish at the same time. Easy. Should we take that Miami Beach call? Because I'm, I'm in such a great mood today. There's no telling just how good it's going to be. Plus, it's Wednesday. It. Huh? I said don't ruin it. It's Wednesday because uh, that means our noon to one comedy bits hour. So we have like a shortened show in that respect. We might actually find out when those Marlin games are supposed to get played. One of these hours, I think it's uh, five something. They're going to try to play the uh, make up last night's game that was rained out against the Spos. George is juggling some papers that I'm assuming is a schedule. Great. Here's Miami Beach. Hello. Yes, sir. I told you six months ago you're gonna get Grandpa out of the door, and this is his. Uh, he's going. He's not gonna stand up at uh, 3:30 from Boca and drive down. Sure, he will. He'll be there like a clockwork man. He's gonna go. You I think? Tell you, of course. That's oh, like right. uh, telling him uh, you're fired, but uh, not really yet. Uh, we just wait till you walk out the door yourself. Yeah, this is an old radio trick. I mean, when I was, uh, uh, I'm forget where the hell I was working. I guess at INZ. And at WIOD, they wanted to get rid of Jerry Sullivan, who had been the program director or the operations manager or something like that. He was in management. Uh -huh. And so they made him the overnight news guy driving the news van, like from 2 to 5 in the morning. Exactly. He's going he's gonna to go out the door. Huh. Anyway, some um, advice when you go to Holland, always have a backup trip planned. Because <laughs> the so good. Always have your ticket ready to fly down south, man. Yeah. And never look for Chinese restaurants. Always go to Indonesian restaurants. They're 20 times as better. And Look for that McDonald's let, on the let me, dam rack. Let me uh, sum up uh, what happened last year with uh, last week with uh, George's show. Okay. You know, they talked about uh, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Carlos stabbed me in the back. Uh, blah blah blah. That's, that's all they talk about. <laughs> please put Pharrell on there when you leave. Let the other guys be the, the backups, please. Okay. Have, have a great a good day. day, man. Okay. I'll still leave. Take care. Bye. Totsins, Dewey. That guy hates you, George. Yeah, I know. And Beaner Boy, too. Now, don't start getting defensive. Now, George just faxed me the schedule. A piece of the schedule. Let's see. Here we go. Wednesday, May 28th. Uh, uh, gym manager 1, Hank 3 to 4.30. 3 to 4 what? About 30, man. 4.30 to 5.05, it's the pregame festivities. 5.05, it's game 1 of the uh, doubleheader. 8 to 11, it's game 2. Weather permitting, of course. Eddie K, uh, 11 to 2, and Joe and Mark over. Now, see, this is not This schedule ain't even right. This is what happens when you give a man's job to a child, Clarence. This schedule isn't even right. You see what it says, Joe and Mark? I do. Two to six. Guess what? <laughs> I understand there's a lot of pressure with all these changes coming out at once. A lot of changes, including certain people's underwear. Joe and Mark, two to five. They're being cut back an hour, which, of course, there's no big deal there, because what do they care? You know, I'm sure they're going to get to pay the same big bucks. Howard David, it says here, 5 to 8 with Geldy. Pharrell, 8 to 10, and then, of course, uh, us 10 to 2. You know, the sound of that again, 10 to 2 for this show, is so... Oh! oh I never, I really never dreamed that I would see the day that would happen. I never really believed, especially with the track record of these people. Once they screw something up, they're very reluctant to uh, admit their mistake and fix it. But the... And I'm looking at our website. What is, what is he doing with this thing? I got a multicolored. I got uh, all kind of red alerts and orange alerts and all. What are you doing up there, Eric? Man, he's uh, doing it in Technicolor today. Anyway, here's our poll for today, and it's similar to yesterday, but uh, now that we got the whole lineup on there, we got to get the take of the audience because I'm sure we'll get a phenomenal response, just like we had <laughs> yesterday. I don't really care. I just I don't care anymore, especially at this point, because this is this is just so good, so sweet. 
We never should have been put at this disadvantage in the first place. Plus, having to follow the lead in of a hostile uh, old coot. Uh, what, what's, what good is that? What's the point? What is the point? Point two. Of trying to follow somebody who's uh, telling every, his audience, uh, I, I would advise against listening to the show that follows us. I mean, what, whoever heard of such a thing? Whoever heard of such hostility, all because George is a little troublemaker and uh, faxed me a few emails. You know, that that was the, uh, well, it was even before that. Right, I let the wig out of the bag. Plant. <laughs> and then when you said, take off those checkered pants. I think that was what put him over the edge. The Mo Man put him right uh, off the edge of the map. The new QAM lineup is, see, and we put this on there because uh, I'm no fool. This is a way of promoting on our website exactly what the new schedule is. I mean, since it is, just like Hank said yesterday, why should we let very jackass break the news story or somebody else when it's on our station? Huh? Why not toot our own horn, is what the Humper said. And right, he had his thumb right on I heard that. You had your thumb right on it, Hank. And like I started to say before, uh, before uh, Beaner Boy interrupted me, Hank has really got it down to a science now. For example, look at today. He's on from th 3 to 4.30. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see what he's on tomorrow? Four to six thirty. He's that's not taking. Incredible. He, he's not taking any reduction in pay, which of course that's nobody's business. But I just mentioned that as another feather in the humper's cap. He's continuing to get paid the same big bucks for working a lot less. To which I say, oh! yeah, which uh, indicates to me, since I'm such a pain in the ass, according to Tom Jicka, I think I might have to rethink my deal. You know? Huh? Yeah. yeah. God, it's going to be on from four to six thirty most days, all during the long hot baseball season. And then, of course, uh, I have a feeling I could be wrong, but next week we got the Belmont on Saturday. Do you have next week's schedule yet? No, that would be too much to ask. Uh -oh. I don't even have Fridays yet. Did you only fax me one page? No. I, sure you one, I only faxed you one page. In other words, I don't have Fridays either. <laughs> They're still working on it. In fact, I just got a great idea. This could be the greatest programming. Talk about keeping the audience on the edge of their seats. This might be the greatest programming concept in the history of the business. We're going to change the schedule every day. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> it's the new TBA format. Right. It's like uh, Pete Boulder used to do sh uh, shifting the, uh, shuffling the. No, no, I wasn't even close to saying that. Although uh, that is what he was shuffling. He was shuffling Schmidt. Back on the light bulb. Remember, he used to move uh, this one around here. Oh, yeah. Joyce Kaufman is on it this time, and Norma Kett is on it. By the way, Norma called me last night. Don't be calling me again anytime soon, Norma. I was serious when I said, it's a pleasure not talking to you. Because when he talks to me, it's always something aggravating. You know, he always likes making a mountain out of a uh, postule. Anyway, our poll today, the new QAM lineup is Mo and Geldy, 5 to 8 a.m. Pharrell, 8 to 10 a.m. In Boca Chica. Neil, 10 to 2. Mad Dog, 2 to 4. Hank, 4 to 7. Weather permitting. Marlon, 7 to 10. Eddie K, 10 to 2. And Joe and Mark, 2 to 5. And our poll question is, what's your take? We got uh, seven choices on here. Love it. Big improvement. It's okay. Okay. Liked it better the way it was. Who's Mo Howard Davided? Who's Scott Farrell? With all the old bags that hate it or don't care, only listen to Neil's show. That's pretty good, the seven choices there, wouldn't you think? And I'm sure that Eric, who's busy working with uh, color crayons or whatever this morning, I'm sure he'll get around to it very, very soon, and we'll get it up there. Won't we, Eric? And pull two. He's trying to put a table up. It's the best way to do it, but he's having a little problem stretching it out. Well, when in doubt, stretch it out, sweetheart. And in your case, that should be no problem at all. Can you imagine the stretch marks he's got? I got bad ones, but boy, can you imagine the stretch? Uh, that's an excellent pull question. Who's got the worst stretch marks? Al Goldstein, Fat Rich, Josh uh, Friedman. Now, what happens when they do the stapling thing and then you gain back all the weight in another 200 pounds? Well, you've got lots of slack, so you can accommodate it. <laughs> oh, man. He must have stretch marks that are like a goddamn road map. Oh, speaking of the road map. <laughs> Oi! 927 at 560 WQM. Are you bald? Well, don't call Fast Train because they can't help you. If you have a sexual performance problem, squirt, squirt. don't call Fast Train. That's not their business. But if you have a dead-end job, then you really ought to call them soon. Because Fast Train can have you fully trained and ready for your new high-paying computer career in just four short months. Call Fast Train toll-free at 1-866-FAST-TRAIN. That's 1-866-FAST-TRAIN. They've got locations in Miami, Kendall, Fort Lauderdale, and prestigious Pembroke Pines. Pick up your instrument right now. 
Call Fast Train, 1-866-FAST-TRAIN. And don't forget, they offer you job placement assistance, financial aid. they got convenient day, evening, weekend classes to fit into your schedule so you don't have any excuses, no mo, to stay in that dead-end job. Your new career is just one phone call and four months away. That's how soon they can get you the training you need to become a computer uh, uh, thing and get yourself a big, fat paycheck every payday. So jump on the Fast Train today and call Fast Train toll-free, 1-866-FAST-TRAIN, or check them out on the web at FastTrain.com. Live and local, this is Sports Radio 560, UAQAM. If there's a butt, I smell it. Yes. Spreading like crazy. Spreading their germs. They'll be buried and eaten by worms. People don't come together. People, they stay apart. Nothing can stop it now. Because we are all scared of SARS. Don't go to Asia. of Toronto if you want to live long people don't live forever people must all depart but no one wants it to happen now that's why we are scared of SARS people don't come together they stay 931, sunny day here, going to be 68 today in Toronto. No rain, no uh, water out there in the highway, so we got a few people dying here and there. What's the big deal with that, right? Yeah, big deal. Nothing's perfect. Anyway, Barry Jackass writes, should I take a call or two before we get to Barry Jackass? And the poll is up, by the way. Great job, Eric. Look at that. Are you impressed, by the way? He's got that lineup in big, uh, bold letters. Some nice free advertising, like the Humper said. Why not toot our own horn? And we got a few votes on there already. What's your take on the new QM lineup? Don't care, only listen to Neil's show, 9. 47.3% of those who voted don't listen to the rest of the station anyway. Wow. Love it. Big improvement, 6. It's okay. Okay. 2. Who's Mo Howard David at 1? And hate it, 1. Hmm. Well, I'm sure they'll call us and let us know why they hate it. Won't they? No. Oh, yes, they will. WQAM, Miami, hello. Hello, you relentless bastard. Yes, speaking. Uh, just want to give you an update on, uh... You're a week away. Yeah. The guy, the last guy on the phone, he wasn't the only one that hated George. <laughs> really? <laughs> you suck, George. Okay. And that's it. That's, that's that one guy. Listen to my little brother, huh? <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, why the hell shouldn't you take some crap? I've been taking it for 20 or 7 years. Why not let you take a little bit of crap? Sure. See, I'm thinking if you work your cards right, once I hang up the microphone in about uh, two, three weeks, I mean uh, <laughs> years, uh, then you can, like, move in and you can be Pharrell's producer because he'll be doing six to ten anyway. <laughs> what? What are you laughing about? Now, you haven't said anything bad about him. You have uh, you guys have hit it off pretty good from what you're telling me. Yeah. You were sucking his ass pretty good the other day. How big hair and just big, red, juicy lips. Yeah, see, he's he likes you. Barry Jackass writes, people in sports, WQM adds Pharrell to the morning lineup. WQM is giving Gravel Voice host Scott Pharrell his own program on weekday mornings and moving Howard David had show an hour earlier in what the station calls an effort to lure male viewers away from Howard Stern. <laughs> See, Barry, I hate to break the news to you, but there are no viewers on radio. I'm sure we got a, we, I, I know we have a lot of goofy people out there, but even they aren't sitting there staring into their speaker waiting to see us. Luring male viewers away from Howard Stern. Well, that's a good excuse. Beginning tomorrow, Thursday, May 29th, Howard Davided and Steve Geldy Goldstein will be host from 5 to 8 a.m. Pharrell will take over David's 8 to 9 a.m. hour, Neil Rogers' 9 to 10 a.m. hour, pitting him against Stern's national program here locally on WBGG, Big 105.9. On WQAM, Rogers now will host 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. See, Barry's like oblivious here because he don't want to give me too much, uh, too many words in here anyway because it's not a sports show. And plus, uh, I know what an asshole he is. So he doesn't mention the fact that I did 10 to 2 for what? About how many years I do it? About 30, man. Yeah. 
Back on I and Z, I was doing 10 to 2. Then I had that one little year hiatus on Zeta in the morning where we kicked some serious ass. And then did 10 to 2 on IOD for, what, nine years? Right. And for uh, four years on this station. So I've been, like, doing 10 to 2 for a very long time until Gregory decided to mess with success and screw with my life. And, boy, did we have a bitch of a time getting that thing going. It's not just Howard Stern you're up against. It's every other goddamn morning show, at least here with Pharrell. He, uh, you know, starts at 8, and he's got that other hour following himself for an hour. You see what I'm saying? Right. Although he will have to follow him. Well, that's another. Better him than us. You know what I'm saying? No, what are you saying? I'm saying better anybody than us having to follow uh, that. Anyway, on WQM, Rogers will now host 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. with Jim Mandich from 2 to 4 p.m., Hank Goldberg 4 to 7 p.m., weather permitting. Well, I mean, you know, there's ball games, pregame show stuff like that. The Humper Sundays be working an hour or two. More power to you, Hank. <laughs> After all these years and all those meals, you deserve it. you got to come. That was funny. Pharrell, a sports shock jock of sorts, joined WQM as a freelancer just two weeks ago. He previously hosted a national show on Westwood One and also announced games for NHL's Atlanta Thrashers. What about his morning show on NEW before, uh, what's their name? Opie and Anthony? Oh, right, Ren and Stimpy, Opie and Anthony. Opry and uh, Opry. Huh, what about that? Which he doesn't even mention here. I mean, Barry, let's face it, all you do is you put down in the paper whatever Greg tells you to put down. And of course, what Greg knows, you could put in a thimble and have uh, Josh Friedman's room for his ass left over. I think Scott's highly entertaining and compelling to listen to, WQM General Manager Greg Reed said. He has an edge and we're lucky to have him. And he's sure a hell of a lot better than George. Greg hates you. Pharrell's show, which is high energy but has the potential to offend, might be better suited for nights, Reed concedes. But Reed said he didn't want to remove late night host Ed Kaplan. And here's the operative line that uh, Greg fed to Barry. We need some help in the mornings. Oh, what an understatement that is. We need some help in the mornings. Would you agree with that? Don't even answer. <laughs> David joined QAM 14 months ago as a morning host and Dolphins play-by-play -play announcer. But in recent months, Reed has said the morning show needs some more humor. Reed has expressed interest in Mandich joining the morning program, but his construction business prevented that. This move is not a display of disappointment in Howard, Reed said. <laughs> it's having a chance to add a really strong person to the lineup. They all have just big asses and stuff like that. David declined comment, says Barry Jackass. Reed said David wasn't too crazy about his show moving up an hour and expressed interest in doing the show with Pharrell, but Reed considers Pharrell a one-man band. Reed said David will be retained for at least the duration of his talk show contract, which has 22 months left. And believe you me when I tell you, Greg and the, the other management people are counting every minute of every day. I mean, he has 22 months left, and he'll be there. See? Got it? Got it. So there's Barry Jackass's piece. So, you know, they're both on our website. Read them both and weep. Tom Jick is Barry Jackass. Tom was a little bit more concise, and that's probably because he didn't speak to Greg, and Greg didn't feed him a bunch of propaganda. 73 votes in there already. I think now we're back. Oh. You know what? Now we're back. Yesterday was like the day after Labor Day. Plus, it was raining like crazy, although not during the show. But they knew it was going to be raining like crazy later on. So they were all out there at the rent-a-canoe places and the rent-a-or joints. Rent-a-joint joint. Ottawa eases pot laws. Oh. I'll just mention that now. Well, it's not a law yet, but it will be. What's your take on the new lineup? And if you want to see the new lineup and just sit there and look at it, you know? Just like some of those pictures we have on our contestants on the Hot Couples. Do we have any new contestants yet? Probably not. Not that I, I've noticed. Not that you've noticed. What do you mean, not that you've noticed? In other words, you haven't checked? Not, I haven't checked today, but yesterday we didn't have any. Well, let's get with it. I mean, we're starting a little bit early. We got till June 15th for the second to go round on the uh, Hot Couples Contest. We got that nice trip for two to the Bahamas. We don't know about Well, I don't want to uh, plug the uh, other prizes yet until we know for sure. And we also have dinner for two at the Pizza Lot as one of the prizes. The new QM morning lineup is sitting there staring you right in the face, and you can look at it, and you can uh, say, well, that makes sense, and I, no, I don't like that. Oh, that really sucks. Now, that's pretty good. Whatever you're thinking, okay, in the quietude of wherever your uh, little computer, your monitor is. And are you looking at that? Doesn't that look impressive? Yeah. I think that's I think that's about the best thing Eric has done, the best work he's done since the last time he came down and beat the crap out of Boner Boy. Impressive. <laughs> it is. It's looking good. Looking good, Eric. And then we got the votes. We got 79 already. What's your take on our new lineup? We don't care. We only listen to Neil Show 29. See down to 36 percent. Love it. Big improvement. 23. Who's Mo Howard David at 11? Even after all of this time, it's okay. Six. Liked it better the way it was. Four. Hate it. Four. And who's Scott Farrell? Just a smell. Has got two votes. Isn't that interesting? 
Who's Mo Howard David at 11 and who's Scott Farrell too? Carlo Farrell used to be on a station on ESPN, right? Right. For a long time. But you'd think that Mo Howard David had not been on the station and all the, uh, all the promotion that we've given him. Endless, tireless promotion that we've given this man. Another trained monkey. You'd think that everybody would know who he is, but they just, they still, uh, they don't know. And maybe they don't want to know Mo. We don't. We, we're, we're delighted to be very, very far distant from him now. He's like a, like a bad dream. Like, like when you have a bad meal and you finally eliminate it from your system. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to get too graphic. No. We have a really bad bowl of grits and gives you the schmitz and you finally, oh, you just get it out of there and you, you flush that, uh, toilet and it all just disappears and you have this feeling of relief. That's, that's why I sound so good to myself right now. Don't I sound pretty damn enthusiastic? I am. Because I feel like a, a like a gigantic tumor has been removed from my system, from my Rectum. bowels. Talk about a pain in the ass. So they want to rip George for three hours today, which is okay with us. We don't really care, do we, Boner Boy? Nah. Although they're not too happy with you either from what they're saying. I'm getting pounded. 20 till 10 at 560 WQM. Well, he was going to come to town, remember, and uh, reinvent talk radio. <clears throat> See, even those people that preceded the Wright Brothers, they gave it a good shot. But they came crashing down to earth, you know. Although at least they gave it a good shot. Hey, listen, if your carpets look shot, here's the answer for you. Dry concepts. No games, no BS, no uh, scams, that per room stuff that some of the uh, carpet cleaning people promote. It, it's all bull crap is what it is. With dry concepts, they give you a written guaranteed price before they start the job. They roll up their sleeves. They dry clean your carpets. They look just like brand new. They smell lemony fresh. They stay cleaner longer. They last longer, too. They're dry in a couple of hours. And you'll say this is a freaking miracle because they make your carpets look just like brand new, no matter how stained, how smelly, how nasty, how embarrassing they may be right now. And they also do an unbeatable job of cleaning your drapes, those expensive area rugs and oriental rugs, your upholstery, your leather furniture. And if you have problems with pet odors or mildew odors caused by water damage, like maybe your pet ferret is acting up, uh, dry concepts will make those go away like magic, too. Nobody uh, does a better job. That's why I've used them for well over 20 years in my home. And everybody I know, friends, relatives, enemies, they all use dry concepts, too. You can't beat them. So do yourself a big favor. Call them the first time if you never used them before. And I guarantee you, you'll use them for a lifetime. Call them toll-free, the professionals at Dry Concepts, 1-800-248-5071. 1-800-248-5071, or just log on to their website for more information on the stupendous work they do, dryconcepts.com. Don't forget, when you use Dry Concepts, you really can clean today and entertain tonight. Live and local, this is 560. The radio is all yours now. QAM. Joe Rogers, God. The way I move around when I go to, I call the mambo movement number two. On the toilet seat, I swing and sway to the mambo beat. The radio play, blowing out a load, and I'm all through. There's just one thing I got to do. A little bit of paper is all I need, so I can make my hiney nice and clean. Like I don't have to push, I'm in control When I'm moving side to side on the toilet bowl I never have to spray, it comes out whole It looks a little like a Tootsie Roll I sway to the left, it's way to the right From cheek to cheek and I'll tell you why Not only are you burning calories But you never ever get a big red ring That's why big fat guys who can use the exercise Can have some fun when they do with the Mambo Movement number two. Oh! Hey, look at me, Alice. I'm doing a Mambo. Hey, Alice. Come on, do it. You look like a whale in heat. Get up and stop it. Get it, get it, get it. Get out. Get out. You know, one thing about uh, Boca Brian, he always finds some excuse, some way to uh, slip back into the 50s again. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. 946 at 560 WQM. Our poll is up on air. It looks pretty goddamn impressive if you ask me. But then again, I'm, I'm pretty juiced. Here's a call from Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. That, that first caller had it wrong. That Georgia show didn't go like that. It was more like this. 
Hey, Beater Boy, did you like the cowboy ball? Yeah, I love it, S.A. Rios. Oh, got to go. I shat Mo's wig. <laughs> what did he just say there at the end? I have no idea. He he did what to Mo's wig? Schmatt. I didn't hear what he said. So so write an article about it, Tom Jicker, because we can understand what he said. I think he said something about he uh, sat on Mo's wig or Schmatt. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. It's our last ever nine to one show. <laughs> oh yeah. Now maybe that's not a big deal to the audience because we've uh, paper trained a lot of these people and gotten them into the habit. And, and we should thank the audience that's uh, adjusted their life to tune over you know at nine o'clock. And now that we've uh, gone over a year, let's see how long we've been doing it since uh, more than that because we started in January of last right. year, right? Mm -hmm. January one. And I'll never forget Greg was standing there that morning. On the day after New Year's, January 2th, whatever day that was. And, uh, like he was shocked that I actually showed up to be at 9 o'clock. Like he didn't believe I was going to be there. Right. And if I was smart, I wouldn't have. I'd have said, are you crazy? You nutcase? Are you you're out of your mind? And he would have said, yes. But at any rate, so it was like January. So we're talking a year and uh, January, almost a year and a half. Like being sent off to purgatory. It's like some kind of punishment for something evil and grotesque I've done, which I don't even know what that all was yet. Must have been. I hope I enjoyed it. And now, finally, at the end of May, it is pretty damn near a year and a half. Oh, my God. And now we go back to 10 to 2, which is where we should have been in the first place, because there's no such thing as a show from 9 to 1. Correct? Well, it doesn't exist. It. You know, you know what else doesn't exist? Easter bunnies? A show from 5 to 8 in the morning oh, doesn't exist. It does not. I'm just mentioning that in passing. Something for you to think about. Put, a little, put that under your bonnet. Well, most of the audience doesn't know yet you wear a bonnet, which probably ain't better for your image. Here's Miami. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Yes, sir. Every, when everything, when I have a, a situation in my life, I always take a piece of paper and I weigh the negatives and the positives. Uh huh. The only, the only positives I can see out of this whole thing is you going back ten to two. Yeah. And you having a good lead-in with Scotty. Right. Which is great. And and Mad Dog still has his two hours. It just moves up one hour. It, well, you know, Mad Dog, you know, if it was up to me, Mad Dog will get more time, but obviously he doesn't want it. But, uh, you know, it's just, why don't you just blow out the morning show? Just blow it out. They made a mistake before. They and they owned up to it. They, then they brought in, they tried to bring in Howard. It didn't work out. Just blow it out. I know there's money involved and all that, but I would yeah. put Scotty on in the morning, and I would let him rip everybody mm -hmm. from 6 to 10. Well, you got to understand. You now, how long has he been on the station? Two weeks? A year yeah. and a half. No, no, I'm, I'm talking. No, I'm talking about Pharrell. But I can guarantee you. Two he, weeks. No, listen to me. He's only been on two weeks. He started as a part-time fill-in. Already, he's got a full-time show starting tomorrow. And so, if things are moving so fast with him, I wouldn't uh, get too carried away. You know, it'll, you know I think it'll know, happen. You know, they're they're punishing everybody else besides the people that they have to punish. Yeah. Okay. Well, they, but they don't want to pay him off. You hit it when you said money. They don't want to pay him off to but go I'm away. But sure I'm sure if they put Scott on in the morning with four hours, I'm sure they'll make that money back very quickly because he will bring in the ratings that you guys want to bring in, which is the young ratings. Well, let me ask. Do you want to pay Howard to go away? Oh, I would pay him. If I had the money, to pay, I would pay him. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say if you had the money. I said, do you want to pay him to go away? Because the uh, the Beasley sure as hell aren't going to do that. You know, I would pay him because, I, I, like I said before, I think Scotty would bring in the ratings from 6 to 10. If they yeah. really want to go up against Howard, they should go up against Howard the full four hours, not just two hours. There you go. You know, I mean, not give him a handicap. You know, they're 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 punishing everybody except the people that they have to punish. And you know, poor Joe and Mark, you know, they, those guys on in the night, they're trying to do their best, and they they take away an hour for them. You know, yeah, they're, they're taking they're, away the only hour that they might actually reach an audience when exactly. somebody's awake. They, you know, and that show has been cursed since the beginning when they used to have Monday through Friday. You know, where they had. Yeah, to that's play. another point, right? Yeah, this this guy ought to be in the programming. You know, and I and I feel bad for them because they're trying. You know, and they're out in the night. You well, you worked at night. You know how it was. Especially they sit around my pool and yeah. they hate me. Yeah. You know. I, okay. Well, listen, Pally. I got all your comments down, and we'll pass them along to the authorities. He was good, but he could have gone right. on until midnight. Well, he was worked up. You know, he at least is one of those people who has uh, strong feelings about it, as opposed to a lot of wimpy, wishy-washy people out there. Don't forget to join George Boca, Brian Beaner Boy, and Miguel this afternoon. Happy Hour 5 to 7 at Treasure Island, located right off the Palmetto, just north of the 122nd Street exit. It's legendary by now. Stop by to win some Marlin tickets and enjoy drink specials while you're there. Got it? Got it. <sighs> Here's a fact that says, well, this is nice. Congratulations on going back to 10 to 2 and the chance to follow a lead-in from a real morning drive host. Oh! I truly believe this will result in the highest-rated Neil Rogers show ever with the numbers going through the roof. Oh! 
No one really cares about the Dirty Boys or Eddie K and QM will continue with the two-hour dolphin puff piece hosted by the Mad Dog. Oh, now that's a shot at the Mad Dog, but nevertheless. But Hank pulled a coup with his less play for same pay. I like that. Less play for same pay. Excellent. Nice going, Hopper. <laughs> if anybody can do it, man. He ta I taught him that well. Funny. He took the ball and ran with it. Well, at least he, at least he uh, kind of waddled over to the dinner table. I do see this as being the first shove of Howard David out the door, while the final nail in the coffin may come with the future edition of Juan from Little Havana, the 5-8 to eight competing with the Three Stooges morning sports show. <laughs> oh. You know something? There's a programming idea. Juan from Little Havana along with Stuttering Steve and uh, Dennis. Again, congratulations, oh. Neil. It says in bold letters. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's an exciting day for us, at least for me anyway. I don't know about George cares that much. He's got to get up anyway to get his kid off to school. Right. That's all good. It's all good. Just like a bubble would say, take a look at it, put it in your mouth. It's all good. Isn't that what he would say? Maybe 148 votes on a poll. What's your take on our new lineup on WQM? It's right there looking at bold letters on our uh, website. 157 votes, like I said. Don't care. Only listen to Neil's show. 66. 42 percent. Love it. Big improvement. 48. Who's Mo Howard David? 15. It's okay. 10. Liked it better the way it was. 8. Who's Scott Farrell? 6. And hate it. Only 4 out of 157 votes. I, it's certainly not going to be unanimous, because if it was unanimous, we wouldn't put the poll on there in the first place, even though it is a good way to kill some time. And secondly, uh, you know, if we thought that everybody would love it, why would we ask the question, right, if you already know the answer right. up front? I mean, it would be like, like that poll, which we haven't done yet, that, you know, paper or plastic. You wipe with your right hand or your left hand, or both, front to back or back to front. See, that's the kind of stuff that got Joe and Mark on overnight. Right. Or side to side, don't forget that. Side by each. Yeah, kind of like your cheeks. Rectum. They're side by each. Here's a call from West Palm Beach. Rhymes with side by each. Hello. What do you say, Neil? Yes, sir. Can you imagine the poor bastards that have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work in here? That's worse than being married. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Listen, you let me tell you something. Mo made this classic entertainer's mistake. You know what that yeah. is? He tried to do something that he ain't very good at. And not smart enough to even try to play off of you the biggest thing in talk radio in South Florida. Yeah. They try to take you on. Yeah, yeah, we sure we sure gave him the opportunity to have a lot of fun with it, and he just he can't do it. He, fun is not he, in his vocabulary. He don't get it. And let me tell you something. You better get that other 22 months because every building broken down is going to cost him about 12 million dollars. So I hope he gets his money for the next 22 months. But I pay him off right after they paid Mandich off. Okay. Quit, quit while you're ahead. Have a great day. Boy, they're, they're certainly... Yeah. But you know something? That's the way this show is. We don't uh, pull any punches. We don't sit here and try to protect anybody, you know? Follow what I'm saying? What do you think? If they get a little bit too carried away, if they want to rip somebody a uh, real big ass who happens to be somebody we like, of course, we don't like that many people. <laughs> huh. Now, we like most of the people in the building. There's uh, good folks in there. Most. Like George Corso in engineering. Boy, you talk about a guy who's floating his way through life. Now, we get Jim Yelton in there, who's a real engineer. He used to work with me at IOD, or INZ, wherever the hell it was, a hundred years ago. Maybe not a hundred, but... About thirty, man. And and just in one day, yesterday, he fixes our, our fax machine. It was totally faxed up. It was just screwed up to beat the band. And then Line 5, which has been out of commission, which screws up our whole phone bank, that thing's been out for months. Right. See, George Corso was not only lazy, but he doesn't care. He doesn't care. And fix it, all I had to do was scream and holler a little bit, which I probably didn't need to scream and holler, but I got a lot of practice, uh, and bring it to his attention, and bada-bing, there you go. It, it was, they were both fixed. I'm pretty goddamn impressed by that, you know what? Yeah. By an engineer that really cares enough to do a little bit of work, and just like Fat Julio that they screwed over and pushed out the door. There was a really good guy. Love you, Julio. Good man. Cared about the uh, equipment, cared about our studio, cared about his job, as opposed to like a, a, a snothead like George Corso, who's a little underling, uh, who knows that he's protected, but he's got the protection of John Fran uh, Don Francesco on the West Coast and Bob Vermouth in Naples. Yeah, that, that's why he's still in there. That's why he's got his job. The Beasleys have got him under the protection of Don Francesco on the West Coast of Florida, not on the West Coast of the U.S. And that's the only goddamn reason he's still there, because you talk about a lazy, well, the word begins with F. That's him. And you know something else? Now that we got this new lineup, which I think is a ball buster myself, 
I, I, I say at this point we hold nothing back. You know what I'm saying? That we hold nothing back. You so all you back? people out there that think that I ripped this one, I, we ain't heard nothing yet, okay? Now that we got Pharrell to boost up our, because we always had the heat on us. Right. All these years it was, oh, well, Neil did this and Neil did, yeah. Now we're going to be small potatoes because this guy is like a potty mouth. I hate my guts. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And that's why we like him. Right, and that's why we like him, because just like Tom Jicka very astutely pointed out, it's going to be a great uh, combo, man. Back-to-back, side-by-each, I think, is the way to put it. 9.57, if I, and, and you know something else? What? I think that i got to play a drum roll. I know we're going to go over on a goddamn break. I don't care. Drum roll. I think this is the first time, 27 and a half years on the air, 27 or whatever it is, uh, in a market, that I ever had a lead-in. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Of course, he better not bomb. <laughs> the number one Asian buffet restaurant in the universe is Emerald Coast with three locations for you. Boy, you want to go and really pig out, this is the place. They're in Sunrise, North Miami Beach, and their newest location in prestigious Pembroke Pines. Start your mouth-watering experience with any or all of their six different delicious soups like that egg drop and wanton and hot and sour. And then sample dozens of succulent entrees like New York Strip made order at the Gourmet Center, a sizzling Asian grill with grilled shrimp scampi style, jumbo scallops wrapped in bacon, Dungeness crab and ginger and scallions, and even hand-carved prime rib. And don't forget to check out the new Oriental chicken salad. There's so many different things to choose from. About 30, man. You won't know where to start or stop, so don't. Just keep uh, shoveling it down. The Emerald Coast Buffet promotes healthy cooking, too. You'll never walk out of that place with a headache because no cornstarch, no MSG, no crab, and they cook all their fine cuisine only with cholesterol-free oils. Their buffet features a full salad bar, a sushi bar, a fresh shrimp cocktail, and because you deserve it, they've got a big, disgusting dessert station featuring pies, cakes, pastries, ice cream with all your favorite toppings, and fresh fruit. They even be having watermelon most of the time, too. So check out the Emerald Coast when you really got a big appetite and you want to take the whole gang to pig out. They're in Sunrise, Pine Island of 44th Street. They're on Collins Avenue, just north of 163rd, North Miami Beach, and at the intersection of Flamingo and Pembroke Roads in Pembroke Pines. Take your family or book your next business luncheon right now. All size parties welcome. Let the folks at Emerald Coast do the cooking for you. Take out delivery always available too. Call 954-572-3822. 954-572-3822 for a fantastic feast always. It's the Emerald Coast Chinese Buffet. <laughs> Sports Radio 560, QAM. Or David's a bitch. Daddy, will you read me a story? Ask your mother, bitch. Mommy, can Daddy read me a story? What do you think I'm doing here, you idiot? Did you grow up on a sitcom or something? Family, isn't it about time you left? This message brought to you by the Church of Latter-day Satanists. 1001 at 560 WQM. It's a not just a happy Wednesday, it's a spectacular Wednesday. Oh! Make no mistake about it, at least for some of us. Slap happy. That's right, we are slap happy. In fact, uh, Muff said he'd come in and slap uh, Boner Boy around a little bit. At least those were some of the words. I may have not put them in the right order. Here's a fax from Jennifer in Miami who says, Dear Mr. Rogers, I was watching C-SPAN 2 yesterday, and the commissioners of the FCC were conducting a discussion regarding the June 2nd decision about huge media conglomerates like we have now with Cheap Channel. I'm so angry that these big corporations and CEOs think they can dictate what news is suitable for me. Do we care in the U.S. anymore, asked Jennifer? No. No, we don't. Well, at least most don't, and that's why you got it. When does the revolution start? Well, Jennifer and Miramar, I hate to break the news to you, but most people in the U.S. are like that. Just exactly like that. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Howard David and Steve Goldstein are being pushed deeper into the night. What a, what a line. Tom Jick has redeemed himself. You know, it's, it's hard to cover up for as many sins as he's committed with just one quick line like that. Almost a throwaway. But at least in my book, he's uh, he's got redemption just about. He's uh, about 80% of the way. Well, maybe not 80. About 30, man. He's, get, he's getting there. He's on the road to redemption. Good old little Tommy Jicka. Always knew you could do it, Tom. Always knew you could come around to our way. Well, here's the new QM lineup. Mo and Geldy, 5 to 8 a.m. Pharrell, 8 to 10. Neil, 10 to 2. Back to 10. And just seeing that in print oh. is so exciting I could squeeze my kneecap. I could squeeze that uh, spot on my left testicle that's healing up very nicely from the ingrown hair. Mad Dog 2 to 4. That should be good. All right. 
And what, what was that? I know he likes playing with the audience, but I mean, what was that crap he was giving yesterday? But he's staying there from uh, one to two, and whether <laughs> he's going to be there. Did you hear that? No. Well, that's right. He does a sports show. You don't listen. How about Bonerboard? Did you hear that? No, I missed that. I was here working. Yeah, he, he was putting the audience on again with that crap about, yeah, well, it's going to be like a, like a battle. Like uh, if I think I'm going back to ten to two, he was just defunding them, you know. And of course, some of those uh, sports nerds out there, they believe it. Hank four to. Did you interrupt me again? Hank four no. to seven. On days when we got nothing else before seven, he. I'm telling you, this this uh, Goldberg guy. You know what he did to them? He did exactly what we need to do to Ariel Sharon and the Israelis. He jewed them down. Marlon seven to ten, Eddie K ten to two, and Joe and Mark two to five. What's your take on the new schedule? We asked. We've got already 192 votes. Jesus Christ. Don't care. Only listen to Neil's show. 39 percent, 75, who do have no, no interest in the rest of the programming on QAM. Love it. Big improvement. 61. Oh. 31.7 percent. Who's Mo Howard David at 19? It's okay. 17. See the the people say it's okay. They don't want to be like too carried away. Like love it. That's too enthusiastic for them. See. Right. So it's kind of like a lukewarm endorsement. Not great, but it's okay. Yeah, see, just like Phil says it, like okay. Yeah, see, not great, you know, not, or not even okay, but like okay, kind of menza menza. Uh, uh, I liked it better the way it was before eight. Who's Scott Farrell? Eight, and hated only four out of almost two hundred votes. One ninety six. Seems to me the audience is giving a rubber stamp of approval, aren't they? Yep. So far. Now, like I said, we we welcome Scott Farrell to the full-time lineup on QM with open arms and legs, and even, in some cases, Rectum. but not this one. But at any rate, and uh, he just better not blow it, you know? I mean, this is not WNEW. This is not Opie and Anthony. Uh, I mean, we do have Vlad and Anthony. In fact, maybe Vlad and Anthony will be doing 5 to 8 pretty soon. Huh? Or 5 to 6. <laughs> what do you think? See, I don't want to think out loud because that would be bad. I have no uh, death wish for anybody, although I will make one exception. I think you can imagine who that might be. Not not a literal death wish, although I would dance on his grave. But in Moe's case, uh, I would make that exception. I mean, if he happens not to be there working anymore very soon, and if Pharrell does 6 to 10, which I'm, I'm positive that's what they've got in mind. I mean, not that anybody told me that in so many words. But I'm positive that's what they're thinking in the back of their mind, in the middle of their mind, even if they have to wait those 22 long excruciating months. See what I'm saying? Right. And then they got the automatic Joe and Mark there who are like flexible, like an accordion, you know? Sure. Because Joe's a good Italian boy. He's like, uh, like a, one of those, uh, guinea grinder things, whatever those are. The those like little accordions? The guinea grinder. And so they can like do two to five or two to six, whatever. They can expand, they can contract. Kind of like Boner Boy's Rectum. ass. That's what Muff said. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. I just, I feel like somebody has stuck a feather in my... Rectum. That's how excited I am about this whole... Uh, and, and and this came like out of nowhere to me. Right. Like out of, out of the blue. I'm on vacation having a really crappy time in Amsterdam, which is a toilet right now, and the weather was awful. And uh, come back here and go through all kinds of delays at customs with 80 million questions. And finally get back here. And then, of course, I got that big uh, thing in the uh, other room, which is finally gone. <laughs> oh, I don't want to say what it was. Well, it was, their, their intentions were good. No, it was not SARS, okay? <laughs> Although it did have an S. In fact, it had some of those letters in the beginning of the brand name of it. Here's a call from Miami. Hello. Hey, hey what's up, Neil? How you doing, sir? All right. Hey, Neil, uh, I wanted to contribute a couple of things. Uh, Go right ahead. Hey, here's a poll that you might want down the line. What's the let, let me, before, you get to, before you get to your poll, let me ask you this question. Can't you feel the enthusiasm and excitement generating right through your radio speaker today? I can feel it. It's, yeah, it's, I... coming, it's coming down the pike. Okay. You, you know what? This, this other guy that called before, he said if, uh, he would pay it off. I couldn't get it out fast enough on the wallet, too, by the way. But uh, my point was, what's the best rendition of Bop 30? Uh, Pharrell's or uh, the one you got? And then I got a statement Bob from all... Bop 30, man. <laughs> I got a statement from all... No te cojas el culo con la puerta. Bye, Neil. What do you say? He's got his ass on the door. Don't let the door hit you in the ass and That's exactly what he said. I see. See, you can't fool me, man. I've been around these spicks too long. I picked up a little on the uh, on the side, not from them. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. There were no spicks in Amsterdam. I will yeah. say that. So in other words, it wasn't a total loss. No, there there were just no tourists. 
And if anybody missed the uh, show the other day, yesterday, uh, let me just give you a warning again. Don't go to Amsterdam. We'll let you know when the uh, green light is out again, if that ever happens. I don't, th I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. It's going to be years down the road. Don't get sucked into wasting your uh, precious vacation days and your precious vacation dollars by going to a place that used to be sensational and a lot of fun and now is an outdoor toilet. In fact, it's so bad there right now that you, you almost feel compelled to, like, take your pants down, like, out in the middle of the dam rack and just take a crap right there on the sidewalk. Oh, no. Huh? Well, no, it's an outdoor toilet. You wouldn't even feel guilty about doing that because isn't that where you're supposed to uh, right. do those things is, like, in a toilet? Well, that's what you're in. When you're Amsterdam. And I, I say that with great sadness because I used to love it, as you know. And these idiots uh, that were calling. See, though, I blame those people for like, and, and blame myself for being weak. Well, Neil, you used to talk about Amsterdam all the time. How come you're burned out? Because it sucks. Okay? Because it sucks. That's like go to a fine steakhouse and there's a steak sitting out on the table, on a plate, that's from like 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, it was a beautiful, delicious steak right out of the uh, broiler, you know? But now, 15 years later, it's a little oldy and moldy and nasty and grotesque. And you might not want to sink your teeth into it too fast. You catch my drift? The message being, staying away from that Dutch meat. Listen to the, like, I'm out there listening to a dolphin game. 10 past 10 at 560 WQAM 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Plus, of course, the best part of this whole deal for me is I get to sleep like to a civilized hour now. Oh! oh. No, seriously, it's been like doing a morning show, doing this 9 to 1 crap. It's like neither fish nor fowl. It's like not doing a midday show that I did for years. It's like having to get up early enough, almost like you're doing a goddamn morning show. So instead of getting up like at 6.15, now I can sleep to 7 like, uh, About 30, man. Yeah, to like almost half past 7. Which is like a normal time of getting up. As opposed to like having to get up at 2.45 in the morning to, you know, weave your, uh, hairpiece. Oh, uh, that's, you know, even for him, I almost have to feel a little sympathy there. Is, is that sad? I mean, don't you know that you've basically hit the end of the road when you have to get up at 2.30, 2.40 in the morning? Yeah, but don't, they, people that age, they don't want to watch a lot and, of radio. And doesn't TV. it take several minutes to pick out, depending on the mood you're in, when you get up in the morning, you look outside, check out the weather, the the shade of the piece that you want to wear that day? Well, depending and on the weather. And blend it, huh? One of them is scotch guarded, I understand, for rainy days. Here's Cutler Ridge. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Good morning, anyway. Good evening. How you doing? Okay. Well, you're the breadwinner. Obviously, you're the breadwinner at the rate, at the station. I sure am. I hear just, that. Just I got ask a couple me. of questions. Okay. One for my son before I let you go. But let me say this. After 20 years for me listening to talk radio and following you wherever you go and, and to QAM, I'm like this here. That morning show was doing fine with Joe Rose and the rest of those guys. And right. They brought in... Right. Well, see, that, that, I couldn't take his voice, but I learned to to to, to adapt to it. Right. Now, as a as a native, born and raised here, I think what makes one of the things that make your show so great is that it's it's local and you touch on local things. The same thing. Right. Like like for the weather in Toronto. Right. <laughs> well, not just that. We understand. We get it. That also is interesting. Your trips here and your vacation. But the morning show lost all that. You bring in Howard David. He knew nothing about the Dolphins. He didn't care to get out there and try and personalize himself with the Dolphins. And that's how that show went by the wayside. So what, now it's the off season. What's Pharrell's going to do? Now what happens? I'm telling you what's going to happen when the Miami Dolphins start to play. These fans, we're going to eat him up. You know, it's one thing to know hockey, <laughs> but we want somebody that's local, you know, that we yeah. can identify with, and that uh -huh. cares. Now the last thing I want to ask before I went, I've been wanting to, at this risk of sounding really stupid. My son took this PE test. Yeah. And he, on, on hockey. Now, of course, you know I'm black. We like basketball and football. Right. He asked me, what's the hat trick? And the first person I thought about was Neil Rogers. Yeah. I said, I'm going to call you because I've been thinking about it about a year now. What's the hat trick? That's when you cover up a bad hairpiece with a... Uh... <laughs> now, the hat trick is when a player scores three goals in a game. Oh, any player scores three goals in a game. Right, if he scores three goals in the same game. And then what they do, the tradition is they throw hats out on the ice when the player scores three goals in the same game. It's a long-standing tradition. Oh, okay, I appreciate that. No one ever explained that to me. Thank well, there you go. Thank you, Neil. Don't ever say this is not an educational <laughs> show, sweetheart. Gotcha. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye. So she's ripping Pharrell in a little bit of an ass there right off the bat. She's putting him on guard, okay, on Scotch guard. Right off the bat. Scott guard. They don't want to hear no uh, Jets crap. They don't want to hear no out-of-towner <laughs> stuff. They want, no, seriously, they want somebody who uh, is really into the local stuff. Now, I did hear Pharrell the other day, when whatever day he was on, 
going on about um, how he's lived there for like a hundred years. How many years did he say he lived in South Florida? About thirty, man. Something like that. So he's familiar with the local scene, but he just better really get emotionally into it. I don't want to like lay down a law, but we don't need another New York reject. You know what I'm saying? We don't want any yeah. more of that New York stuff and people's relatives and families coming to the games with Jets caps and Jets uh, outfits on. That's that's not going to fly. That alienates the uh, crowd out there, okay? You follow what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I, I think, I, I think I, that's I, your problem. I think if you'd be a little bit more enthusiastic about the South Florida sports team, just <laughs> like me, you know, like the Patriots, yeah. I mean. 1014 at 560 WQM. The Neal deals just keep on rolling out like on an assembly line at Tom Lehman and Joe Prieto at Hallett Pontiac GMC. And here's uh, what's going on right now. Neal deal number one, get yourself 0% financing for 60 months on every 2003 Pontiac or GMC in stock. And Neal deal number two, get you up to a $4,000 rebate on every 2003 GMC and Pontiac in stock. And former military personnel... Listen to this. Get yourself an additional $750 rebate from your friends at Hallett right now. And here's a Neil end of the month deal, but you only have a very limited time. Let's see, 20th, 20th, 29th, like four days left. Tom and Joe will take an additional 500 bucks off on some of the Pontiacs and uh, GMC's most popular models, but act quick because, like I said, the Neil deal is only good through the end of the month, four more days. And, of course, Hallett has always has got a great selection of dependable pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, and credit is never a problem when you do your car shopping at Hallett. They'll treat you right. Hallett Pontiac GMC, that's why they've been in business in the same great location for over 35 long, excruciating years. That's 13401 South Dixie Highway, U.S. 1 across from the falls, open every day, seven days a week. If you want more info on those Neal deals, call the Neal Deal hotline, toll free from anywhere. It's 1-888-534-4211. That's 1-888-534-4211. And don't forget, all Neal deals subject to credit approval. See dealer for details at Hallett Pontiac GMC. Even Boner Boy will tell you they really are professional grades. Can beat that gator meat. I like it. I like it. And now, here's Comical Ali, the former Iraqi Minister of Information, with today's Hollywood Minute. America can't get enough of the number one blockbuster tour de force movie, It Runs in the Family. This brilliant work is smashing box office records. Sexy infidel Michael Douglas has never acted or looked better. His son Cameron is the most talented young actor in the business. And Kirk Douglas is such a professional, one can't even tell he had a massive stroke. Go see it runs in the family, America, if you can find a ticket, that is. With the Hollywood Minute, I'm Mohammed Zahid al Sahaf. We will behead you all. Stay tuned to this station for more updates from Iraq's Minister of Information. I think he'd be a hoot between 5 and 6 a.m., you know what? I'm just thinking that. Oh, yeah. boy. It's the one to two hour. Just practicing for tomorrow. Boy, this is exciting. This is a moment I never dreamed in my wildest expectations that this could possibly happen. Especially when, you de when you're working for a bozo like Greg. Join George, Boca, Brian, Beaner Boy, and Miguel this afternoon for a happy hour. That's right. When he goes to Treasure Island, it is Boner Boy and uh, Miguel. Five to seven happy hour at Treasure Island this afternoon, located off the Palmetto, uh, just north of the 122nd Street exit. Stop by to win some Marlin tickets and enjoy drink specials while you're there. And, of course, the feature of the day who will be the lovely whatever her name is. The we know? The lovely uh, Beaner Boy. Right. The new QAM lineup is on our website. Take a look at it. Read it and weep. Take a look starting right there on the top, Mo and Geldy, 5 to 8 a.m. See, the good, a good part of the deal is a lot of our people out there probably sleep till about, you know, 7.45, 8, right. 8.15. Huh? Maybe even 9. And so by the time they got up, that's that, that's already gone. Mm -hmm. You know? Like they took some kind of an a oral enema. Oh. <laughs> What's your take? Don't care. Only listen to Neil show, 95. 37.6%. Love it. Big improvement. 81. 32.1%. Oh! Sounds promising. It's okay. 24. Who's Mo Howard David at 22? Who's Scott Farrell? 17. You know, I think I actually could do that if I could. I don't want to, but I mean, I could, I could do hurts. that. Does it hurt? Oh, yeah. Liked it better the way it was nine and hated only four. So those last two categories out of 252 votes. 
A shocking total. See, I told you yesterday we had some big stuff coming this week, and there were some doubting Thomases out there who think that I was just making it up, doing it a little April Fool, a little bit uh, late, whatever. We don't mess around on issue. I've told you 50 million times we don't exaggerate, and we don't mess around. We don't make up stories, you know. Especially when you work at QAM, who the hell has to make up stories, right? When you have the kind of mayhem and psychosis that goes on on a regular basis on this radio. See, the one thing I really like about Pharrell, even though I don't know him, I've never seen him, I've never met him, I've never spoken to him. But I know for sure, as sure as my fat ass is sitting in this very nice office chair right now, that he isn't going to try to get anybody canned. <laughs> no. Huh? No. No, you see what I'm saying? Now, now, if if there was nothing else, right? If, if that was the only redeeming quality that he had, that would be such a major improvement in terms of the psychological makeup of QAM. Even if I made fun of his wig and sent you his emails, right? Or made fun of his checkered pants, or whatever the hell he's wearing. And they they're all filing lawsuits against me for having a boombox at the pool. Yeah, see, he don't give a crap. He's just one of those people who just uh, laid back and stoned off his ass and, uh, you know, whatever. He don't care. As opposed to some other devious people who come in the, the likes of which I've never encountered in my life, and they want to get everybody fired at it. If you look at him cross-eyed, if you make some comment about his lime green pants being a little bit too light for the uh, weather, whatever, whatever it might be. Trying to, like, browbeat his way through life. Well, maybe this is the reason that certain people wind up uh, being uh, shown to the door Time after time after time after time, because maybe that whole routine just wears a little bit thin. I can't stop. I know that, and that's unfortunate. Now, what is Ramsey? What does that mean? Is this Patsy or Ramsey on the phone? What is, what is Ramsey? Ramsey, New Jersey? Hello. Good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. You're in Ramsey, New Jersey? Yeah, yeah. I'm listening to you on the computer, which is normally reserved for, like, Internet porn. So this right. is very well, this special. Is... We're working on it. Well, I, I still have my clothes off, though. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make a comment on uh, Pharrell and, and Howard also. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, um, for anybody who thinks that uh, Pharrell isn't going to have anything to talk about when he's down there when, when sports is over, boy, are they, boy, are they sadly mistaken. Um, and I now think that Howard's career has the half-life of a cheese sandwich in the Sahara Desert, <laughs> which is probably where he'll be doing his next show from. Uh huh. You know, you could send him back up north here, so we can give him a decent burial at sea in the Hudson River. You know. He he's not allowed back. Yeah. No. It wouldn't surprise me. Ever since he made that comment on the Jets game, gang rape is funny. That was the end of him. Well, let me just leave you with this: where there's Pharrell, there's fire. All right. We'll listen to you tomorrow. Thanks, Pally. How do you like that? Calling from Jersey already to uh, promote Pharrell, huh? We didn't have no calls from Jersey when Mo started, did we? Uh. Well, no, we did not. Not positively. Now, what's going to happen with the, uh, I guess, and that's another good thing about this, because I'll be sleeping until about 7.30. And so I, by the time I wander in here, I won't be hearing any of the, uh, more, that uh, whatever that show is. Well, Mo I guess we'll show. To, you'll have to roll tape? No, I will not be rolling <laughs> tape. I will not be hearing one word of that thing, which is really oh! another reason that I'm so enthusiastic. God, there are just so many. Carlos can give us an update every day. Yeah, Beaner Boy, he uh, monitors. He's our spy, Boner Boy. Yeah. He wants to hear what name they're using for him on this uh, given day. I think he likes you, man. I think that's where that boner boy I, I do, I came from. I think he's into a beaner boy. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. How are you? Great. Hey, this is a good day. Um, I'm pretty happy about the results of uh, the new lineup. Uh, the only thing that I can see is being a negative. Well, first of all, let's just say that I'm really happy that Mad Dog has still got his two hours. Right. Uh, the... the uh, the happiest part of the entire move is that Hank has less hours. <laughs> I'm, and, I'm sure he would. Uh, I'm sure he'd agree with you. Absolutely, because uh, he's terminal. Well, but I'm, he wouldn't uh, agree with that reason, but he'd agree that he's uh, delighted to work few hours and get paid the same money. Absolutely, well, good for I'm him. I'm ready for That's it. That's good for him. And and uh, the, the really good reason is that is that I don't listen to Howard. I do listen to Toast Run and that Cornhole, and I will not have to listen to Cornhole anymore. All right. And, George, one last thing. Don't have another child. The writing's on the wall, jackass. <laughs> I can listen to my little brother. <laughs> That's tough. Woo. Yeah, don't don't hold back, folks. If you hated the job that George did last week and or Boner Boy, don't hold back, okay? We're not holding back anymore on this show. They've, they've given us like a signal, okay? They were kind of like tiptoeing on the uh, walking on eggshells for a little while there. And then finally, all of a sudden... <laughs> A big pear dropped over there in Naples for some reason unbeknownst to us. 
And we're not going to ask any questions. We're just running with it, you know? Just like when Duff came in yesterday and said, run with it, have a good time. Isn't that what he said? Something like that. Here's a fax that uh, from Quincy in Miami who says, so, so no mo, mo. Actually, I think I'm going to miss him. The reason why I say this is because he's the only person who will still walk around with a dead animal on his head after all the attention and you and George created to the uh, thing, to that thing. You see, most problems, he took too long to notice that his attitude sucks and nobody likes him, only the hairpiece. Go, Scott. Go, Scott. Kneel your God. No mo mo. Mo blow. Please go. I can't stop. <laughs> oh, man, I wish you could see this thing. I wish we had, like, television for just a few seconds. Well, we can put it up. It's uh, a beautiful thing. I'm trying to find it. I can't stop. Yeah, that's, oh, that's what he was trying to say. I can't stop. The pressure of this, and don't forget it is Wednesday, so we got our all comedy bits noon to one hour to kind of like give you a little bit of levity to lighten things up a little bit, especially when you got water up to your armpits. See, I do love that local aspect, and what I call it is being local like from a distance. That's the way I love South Florida. Live, Live and local. We are Sports Radio 560 QAM. QAM! Well, he's a Tallahassee Nazi! Woo! Who got the money from his daddy? Woo! And as I said, my little bratty! Woo! With an agenda that's crappy! Woo! Well, he's a Tallahassee Nazi! No, Bodea Belle! Well, he's a presidential son who doesn't have to run. No one else is going to win. He might as well just move right in. He has a golden spoon. He was born with up his ass. So look out, all you Jews. Woo! Get ready for the gas. He's a Tallahassee Nazi. Oh, hey. He'll give our civil rights a whammy. Because he's a Tallahassee Nazi. Love of the FLA. Well, he's a very wealthy dude with very fascist views who never paid his dues. By next year, we'll all be screwed. Sing hard, sing hard, sing hard, sing hard. Any schmuck could win that race against Buddy McKay. Why do you think they call it Goober? Notorial anyway. He's a Tallahassee Nazi. Woo! He'll make the KKK happy. Woo! Yeah. yeah, he's a Tallahassee Nazi. Love of FLA. Ten thirty three on the Martin Borman show, twenty seven before eleven o'clock. We got Mad Dog at one. This is the last day for this schedule ever. This is a critical day in your lives, South Florida. Most people aren't even aware of it yet. I love what Boner Boy did I <laughs> I just noticed this by accident because I usually uh you know, later in the day I see uh the way he's presented the stories, the bedtime stories that I faxed to him. All right. Now do you see this, George? I'm looking now. The article by Tom Jicka about the uh, programming changes, and it says, article by Tom Jicka, go figure, he actually wrote something about radio. Oh! Nice going, Boner. Thank you. Give a little shot to little Tommy Jicka there. And well-deserved, I should point out. Very well-deserved. Now, what is this? Attention, Charlie. Can you add this? What? What is this? That's from Troy. Well, what is it? It's something you're supposed to add to the copy. One moment, please. Uh, the biggest loser in the episode of the QAM uh, ongoing soap opera is Bill Zimper and the Dolphin fans. Will Mo still be the voice? Yes. Yes. Yes, he will. Yeah, Zimper got screwed over big time. But what, what can I tell you? And, you? and, of course, the Mad Dog, what could he say? We all know how he felt about it. Now, well, what is this? First-time customers. I, like, I'm supposed to be able to read this thing that you just I... faxed to me? Hey, Troy, I hate to break the news to you, sweetheart, since you still got an hour before this spot. Is this spot, did I already do Chuck Alfieri today or not? No, it's in the next hour. Uh, I realize it's an awful lot of work, Troy, but you're going to wind up just like Roy! with bleeding, oozing uh, stuff coming pustules in your ass if you don't uh, sit down and type, when in doubt, type it out. I can't read it. I can't make out any word other than says Charles Alfieri, the address number, which uh, we already know that, you know? Right. 
So I'll be delighted to uh, add this to the copy by the time it's, uh, the spot runs. But I'm going to have to be able to read it. I understand it's quite a concept, Troy, for some of you dark folks to be able to understand. But it's just the way things are, okay? Print it out right on his forehead and put him on the fax machine. Stand him on his head. The new QAM lineup is right there on neilrogers.com for you to peruse. It's there in big, bold letters. We have 297 votes. What's your take? Don't care. Only listen to Neil's show, 108. 36.3%. That's called exclusive QM. Isn't that what they call it? Okay. Love it. Big improvement, 97. 32.5%. It's okay, 31. Who's Mo Howard David at 22? Who's Scott Farrell, 22? I think that's being manipulated. Liked it better the way it was before, uh, 12, and hate it, 5, out of 304 votes. I get complained at every single day. Everybody wants to evict me. 24 before 11 at QAM. Let's do Port St. Lucie. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Congratulations on the changes, sir. No doubt in my mind that it will be helpful for your program. And for uh, my life. For my life. Uh, yeah, no, no, no doubt. And uh, it, it must be nice. It's been a while since you had a lead-in. That I mean, I've only listened a couple times, but it seems like he can hold his own even on a slow sports day. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of him is that, uh, from what everybody tells me, he only talks about 40% sports and 60% wild crap, you know, whatever exactly, is on his mind. Exactly. Uh, excuse me for asking, but, I, I, you know, explain to me where the logic fails here. Uh, syndication, now that you're moving back to your natural time slot, I mean, syndication becomes more of a viable option because nobody has a syndicated show 9 to 1 like you pointed out a zillion times. Right. Uh, you're running the West Palm Beach market even though you don't advertise there. And basically, uh, there's an FM talk station owned by Clear Channel. And I know right away you're going to say, well, it's owned by Clear Channel. I can never get on there. But, I mean, the Clear Channel FM talk station in Orlando has Howard Stern as their morning show. Yeah. And, I mean, they're already kicking their ass on what they're offering up during the midday. You know, you have like a five share and out-of-market AM signal. I mean, you pop you on FM, and you're instantly the number one show for men in that market, I would say. Right. I mean, so, I mean, are your people talking to their people, you know, seeing if anybody's interested in making a deal? I mean, what would be the downside for you, and what would be the downside for Beasley making that happen? Because it's not like you're generating any revenue out there. You'd be getting something from something you're getting nothing from now. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I sure do. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. In fact, you must be psychic because as of a couple of days ago, George was telling me that there are some things being discussed. Okay. Well, at least, the, I mean, I don't care if it doesn't work out, but, man, just somebody needs to... You know, start the ball rolling and see if that's a possibility. Yeah, well, I know it won't be Norma Kent. I know that. So, um, I'm, you know, we'll have to grab the ball by ourselves. Well, get an agent, man. Start spreading the word around here that you, you know, maybe like to be on in West Palm on a nice, clear FM signal. I'd like to be on in, in uh, Dayton Broward on a nice, clear FM signal. I'll tell you that. <laughs> have a great day, Pally. Yeah, you too. Bye. See, there you go. There's a guy who wants this show syndicated, and we say, oh. yeah. We go back to 10 to 2. That's a time slot that every radio station has. It's like a real time slot. Shows are on from like 6 to 10, 10 to 2, 2 to 6, th all of these things. That's how radio works. I know that comes as a great revolutionary concept to Greg Reed and to Norma Kent. Of course, Norma Kent does a show from like 8 to 9 on a make-believe station that nobody hears. Don't call again, though, Norm, please. Don't get carried away. Don't overdo it. It's nice hearing your voice, but uh, let's not get too carried away. 567 -0560. Pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon line. It's going to take a conscious effort. You do realize that tomorrow because we're all creatures of habit. It's going to take a conscious effort to set the alarm clock for an hour later and to actually be prepared, be ready to go back to doing 10. See, 9 o'clock, it just, my metabolism isn't ready. You know what I mean? Right. I know it sounds silly. But you're just, when you're in a habit for years sure. and years, it's like people who do morning shows. I mean, people, oh, gee, how can you get up 4.30 in the morning? But when you do it for years and years and years... People like Carl DeSue's and J.P. McCarthy and, uh, you know, some of those old-timers that did morning radio for, uh, what was the guy in uh, J.P. Did I just say that? I just said that. Herb Oscar Anderson, that's what I'm thinking, WABC. You get in the, uh, your body gets in that, and then all of a sudden when you have this dramatic change, like certain people that have to get up now like at 2.30 in the morning to dust off their hairpiece, it's going to be quite, like, shocking, wouldn't you think? I sure hope it doesn't affect his health. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's Hollywood. Hello. I'm psycho. <laughs> okay, that's the new uh, five to six a.m. guy. No, I, ju I just have a feeling that as the weeks and months roll on, you know, and as the payoff number becomes less and less, and of course, all depending on this. Uh, where are we now? Oh, right. the summer book is no. Uh, 
what, where are we? See, I'm lost. January, February, March, April, and May. So the spring book is two thirds of the way uh, through, two thirds. But if, for example, in the summer book, when uh, that thing comes out and you go through the hour by hours, and if uh, 5 through 8 a.m. is like more about what it has been, and 8 to 10 there's a real spike and real increase, mm -hmm. you see where I'm going with this? No. Where? To the break. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QA, QA. Straight O Radio Big Show. Oh. That's how we pass the time away in the gay old jail of Oz. Hey, Steve. Hey, Jim. Say, did you get a haircut? <laughs> nope. Boy, because there's something different about you, buddy. What's different about Jim? He just asked his doctor about Viagra. Hey, Jim, have you lost weight? Nope. In fact, I've gained a few inches, if you know what I mean. Viagra. It can change the way you feel. Ow! Who just poked me in the ribs? Oh, hi, Jim. Hey, have you been working out? Nope. But I'm feeling pretty pumped up. See the difference Viagra can make in your life. Whoa, Jim! Is that a pocket fisherman in your pants? No, but I am in the mood to troll for Snapper. Viagra. It'll change you for the better. Hi there, Jim. Say, did you get a raise? Yeah, <laughs> you could say that. Ask your doctor about a free sample of Viagra. But please, wait until you get home to take one. <laughs> 1044 at 560. It's always a good place to hang the laundry, I guess. Here's a fax from somebody who's just euphoric, who's in hysterics. <laughs> it says it's a great... This is a chronic fax here. It's a great day at QAM. That place has to be jumping. Congrats to you and George and Boner Boy. I'm going back to 10 to 2 and getting a first-time lead-in. First time ever a lead-in. But I'm as pretty as a girl. Yeah, there you go. My question is, do you think Geldy wishes he never met Howard David? Yes. And how can you say the Howard David show from 5 to 8 without laughing? 5 o'clock, that's hilarious, it says. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, don't you find that kind of like cruel and unusual punishment that somebody would like rub it in like that? Yeah, that's terrible. To have to get up in the wee hours of the morning and start a show at 5 o'clock because they're trying to, like, uh, bury you, literally and figuratively, <laughs> and put you in a spot where, like, nobody uh, can be embarrassed by hearing the uh, boring crap you're putting out. <laughs> the pedantic, condescending uh, crap that you're putting on the ear. <laughs> there you go. Boy, and that's separation. You know, it's, it's like there's going to be... It, you know, it would almost be, I'm, I'm not, this isn't a knock at Pharrell because it's great having him as the lead in, but it would, even if we had dead air in there, it would be an improvement. See what I'm saying? Ooh. If we had the radio test pattern from 8 to 10, I'd be going, All right. yeah, that would be sensational because we need that separation. In fact, maybe he'll do better away from us. Maybe we're his problem, you think? Well, he said so once. Maybe once? <laughs> well, then I know what. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line a great day this is the dividing line in our lives you can feel it you can smell it here's miami hello miami hey neil how you doing pretty good sir hey congratulations good uh good news all the way around the only one only one problem do you think he can figure out that they're trying to get rid of him i mean for god's sake senior citizens Love being places at uh, five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> put, him, yeah. put him on during the early bird special, and I'll guarantee you he's out the door. Oi! Okay, thank you so much, and have a great day. What do you say? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. A whole bunch of open lines on there now. I was a little bit too euphoric here. I thought the audience was really into this today. They're not. Although after yesterday, this is a major improvement, you know? You have, right. you have to take little teeny tiny baby steps, especially after the... Although I thought we'd sure have a lot more critiques of the job that you and Boner Boy did last week. Besides that one guy? No, you, what do you mean one guy? I'm sorry, too. The one guy called twice. Yeah, that's true. He did? Yeah, yeah. my fault. About 30, man! 5670560, five, oh, five, pound 560. The rumor I'm hearing up here is that you guys did a spectacular job. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, it was In fact, such a good job. Here. I'm thinking that George still ought to be buying Boner Boy a car. Next two of us. Huh? No, Next I mean, this, cool is, us, yeah. this is a guy. It's in uh, almost June. This weekend will be, we'll be into June. Mm -hmm. And here's a punk who's doing a spectacular job on right. our website, I should point out. I mean, a phenomenal job. 
And and he's driving a car that has no air conditioning. I, I know. And if it wasn't for and the no radio, it costs eight hundred dollars. And no radio. How can we get? How can we get? Uh, Mo David at how, uh, spy reports when we don't have a radio in his car. He, he carries a boombox with him. Well, hey, I, sub I subsidize him every way I can. Don't most Ricans carry a boombox? No, seriously, I think you ought to be paying somebody's car payment, so why not him? How about a nice little Kia? Aren't those very inexpensive? Uh, I'll Kia his car. Yeah, I bet you will. Come on, that's what I'm thinking. Get him a nice little of something, and uh, let, this summer... His birthday is coming up. I'm going to get him a little something. My birthday yeah. next week. That would be great to go outside and see well, a what big What day is ribbon. your birthday? Uh, the 4th. The 4th of uh, oh, June. June. Oh. Right. No, okay, so all you people day. out there in the audience might want to chip in and buy being a boy like a little, maybe like one of those little Corvettes that Boca Brian's always bringing by that I don't want, you know, those or little toy Corvettes. Or a Chevette. Yeah, that's probably what he'd like to do with it. Here's uh, Boca. Hello. Hey, good morning, Neil. What a yes, happy sir. day. It sure is. Oh, Happy Day by the Edwin Hawkins Singers. I wish I had that record right here. I'd play it now. Yes. Um, payback is sweet. It just takes a little time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I like the new lineup. Um, you know, you um, mentioned something about Mo's age before. Uh, on Friday, he made a reference that he was in the, the um, mid to upper 50s. Mm. And today he made a reference with a singer that he liked to some birthday, and he said, well, her age is 59. He's right around there. Right around there. Give or take give or take a few years. About 30, man. Uh -huh. give, give or take 15 years. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, he's full of Schmidt, and they're pushing him out the door. I love it. Thanks okay, have a great day, pal. Obviously, he's he's got a little uh, cupcake, you know, with a, a candle in it. And he's yep. having his little own personal party over there, and I'm sure that many people are celebrating. It's not that we wish most people any uh, bad luck in their careers and their lives, but in this case, we do make an exception. Because never in the history of my life, and I worked in this business since I was 17 years old, so that's 43 years. I worked in the radio business, and it's a piece of crap, by the way. It's a garbage business, and much worse now than it ever used to be, because at least in the olden days when you had different ownership, at least there was a possibility if somebody had a little bit of talent, a little bit of uh, something. They had a chance. Now the chances are slim to none because you got three companies that own every goddamn radio station in the universe. But in those 43 years, I've encountered some terrific people, some good friends, some people I could have cared less about, some assholes, as in any business. But I have never encountered anyone with the arrogance, the ego, the uh, psychosis, the bombast of this creature. Of this man with the Weasley hairpiece, who came into this uh, place and decided he was going to like uh, give everybody what for. He was going to throw his weight around, and believe me, he's got plenty of it to throw around. He's got a pupic, and so the fact that he's being what is the line that Chicka used again? I'm going to save that. I got it right here. I, I'm keeping it close to my heart. Pushed deeper. Howard David and Steve Goldstein are being pushed deeper into the night. I notice most of the commentary has been about Mo, very little about Gildy, but I will say this, Gildy. You made your bed, now you're lying in it, okay? Now you're going to lie in it. You hook your, uh, what's that, what do they say, you latch yeah, on, you latch your, your star uh, to the, uh, whatever, yeah. to the bedpost overnight. Hitched your trailer to that park, I don't know. To a piece of turd. And now you're going to go right down. So I, I, I'm sure there won't be any more of those psychotic calls when I'm in Florida. From guilty. Oh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? This man's impossible. I'm going down the drain. Well, you're going down, all right, baby. But when I think of many of the things that uh, were said, and he sat there and just parroted right along some of the most uh, grotesque, unacceptable crap, and the fact that my good, close, personal buddy Jugs McDonald, that he's been uh, after his job for at least two years now. By the way, speaking of that, what a horrendous game last night, huh? You watched it, I'm sure. Oh yeah, every minute. Jersey 3 and the Ducks nothing, a coma inducer if ever there was one. Just exactly what you'd expect with those two teams. Let's only pray for four straight for a sweep and just get it over with, okay? Get it out of our lives and wait for a fresh start next year. Pembroke Pines, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Good morning. Buenos dias. Oh, happy days is right. We yes. still have a uh, decent hour like, uh, like you used to because I remember when you uh, went to 9 o'clock, Oh. used to complain that, oh, I wish I was back at 10 o'clock because uh, people got so used to listening to you. It took me a long time to, listen, to get used to listening to you at night. Not only that, but everybody who's listening to radio shows, people, as you know, are creatures of habit. 
and people are listening to the shows that are around from 6 to 10. They've been doing that for years. So at 10 o'clock, the habit was, if they liked this show, they would turn over to me at 10. And it was like a natural segue, you know what I mean? Even the, even the Howard Sperm people, many of them, after four hours, that was enough. Even though, and they, but, but nevertheless, they would, a lot of them, turn over to me at 10 o'clock. It was like a ritual, okay? It was part of the what you do. And then all of a sudden to expect me to come out of the blue and, and change everybody's listening habits, you just can't do it. I mean, we did pretty well in that hour, but you, you, it's almost impossible. Yeah, I mean, you know, the ratings showed, you know, when you were, since you went to the 9 o'clock hour, you know, uh, for the whole time that you, you were doing it, you know, your ratings were good. I mean, there was nothing wrong with the ratings. But it was, it was but... our weakest hour in addition to which when a lot of people who would tune in at 10, they missed the first hour. Right. So they have no idea what well, we're talking the about, what me. the show's all about, what the poll is, what what's going on, and it, it just is like a handicap. That's right. Well, it's great that you're going to have some, you know, a better time slot and have a a better person to uh, to you know get a good lead in on. Hanging and, out in Boca. That's where I live. That's right. And uh, you know, send uh, send uh, Mo back to Boca, and uh, you know. Pack a pack a sandwich with them, you know, and uh, a salami sandwich. Yeah, there you go. Okay, hey, pal. I got a, a request. Yes, sir. Uh, a shameless request. No problem. With uh, it's the one with uh, Mickey, Mickey and uh, Eisner. Eisner. Yeah, it's the one. I mean, there's there's several of them. I'll I'll play the one I like. Okay. I wish okay. you put it on the I wish you put it on the web. I was listening to uh, you know on your Neil Sounds. It was great. Have a great day, pal. Time. Don't push your luck. Have a great no, life. I'm saying it's great, though. It is great. It is. Thanks, Neil. Have Bye. a great day. Good luck. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, he just didn't want to say goodbye. You've been with people like that, you know, oh, yeah. like your mother. Join George, Boca, Brian, Beaner Boy, Miguel, and George's mother this afternoon for happy hour 5 to 7 at Treasure Island, located off the Palmetto. She's just north of the 122nd Street exit. Stop by to win some Marlin tickets and enjoy drink specials while you're there. What? She's the feature. And uh, Troy, by the way, has not faxed me. Uh, when, oh, don't uh, worry about it, uh, manana. Oh. In other words, there's no no rush. emergency. Right. Thank the Lord. Okay, anybody that's got a computer now, if you don't, I guess, I guess in all fairness, we do have some people out there over the age of 100, some people who are in their cars. I mean, it's pretty hard to be, you know, checking out your uh, computer when you're in a car. Oh, that will be next one. Won't you be surfing the net? While you're talking on the phone and watching your little TV monitor, you can also surf the net in your car. I mean, in South Florida, could it make any difference? No. I don't think so. The new QM lineup, Mo and Geldy, 5 to 8 tomorrow morning. Starting bright early tomorrow morning, the Mo Howard David and Steve Geldy Goldstein show, 5 to 8 in the morning. Pharrell on the radio, 8 to 10 a.m. Makes his debut as uh, as in, I mean, he's been on the station a couple of fill-ins, but his first time on his own show. We'll be back to 10 to 2. Oh, thank the Lord. Oh, oh. No, good. Yes. Mad Dog, 2 to 4. Hank, 4 to 7. <coughs> Marlon Games, 7 to 10, or whatever other crap we got to put in there during the summer months. Eddie K, 10 to 2. And Joe and Mark uh, lose an hour there, 2 to 5. And uh, like you said, what do they care? They don't. Well, they, they don't care. That's good. See, that's the kind of guys that they are. They, they would like to be on the whole four hours, and especially five to six, because there are actually a few people awake at that hour. But not only, look at it the other way. When you're doing a really crappy show, right? when you have no material, and when the calls are really lame or you don't get any, of course, we can relate to that. And the good part about being on two to five in the morning is you know that everybody's asleep. My, my and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAQAM. Are you fudge packing? Good morning, New York Matt. Steve Phillips' office. Steve Phillips, please. Please hold. Hello, Steve Phillips. Phillips? Who is this? You're killing me. Who is this? You are killing me. Who in the world is this? It's Mickey Mouse. What the hell's going on over there? Mickey Mouse? Mickey Mouse. I don't work for you. Oh, you wanna? That's why I'm calling. I want to offer you a job. You're terrible. Mickey, I already have a job. Not for long, Phillips. Why do you want me if I'm terrible? Oh, you fit right in over here. I'm surrounded by idiots. I figure, what the hell's one more? I got people who don't know what they're doing from coast to coast. Oh, gee. Phillips, hold on. You know what that is, Phillips? No, I don't know what that is, Mickey. That's Remus. Remember the old black guy with a bluebird on his shoulder? I know who that is. Steve! I got Steve Phillips on the phone. He's horrible, boss. I know. 
here. Am horrible. Or am horrible. Phillips. Yes, Mickey. Are you ever going to, like, win two in a row? Mickey, we're practicing right now. We're going to win tonight. You're terrible. I'll pay you five million a year. No, I can't do it, Mickey. I gotta go. I gotta practice to run. I'll pay you six million a year. I gotta go, Mickey. You don't run the practices. I tell you what, you call me tomorrow. Oh, you want me to call you back? You're playing hard to get. Call me tomorrow. You're playing hard to get. Hold on a second. Why would Steve Phillips want to come work for us when he listens to all this crap going on? Because he's terrible. I know he's terrible. But he belongs here, boss. Uh, that's what I'm trying to tell him. You Maybe Steve Phillips? on network, boss. Well, that's what I'm thinking. we got to get rid of Isaac. Hello? Yes, Mickey. What do you think, Phillips? Yes. You're god-awful horrible. You're perfect for the mouse house. You know what? On second thought, I really got no interest in talking to you. What do you mean? Wait a WQM. See, I almost forgot about those two new ones. Yeah. Didn't you? No. Here's a fax from Rudy who says, Neil, the only person I feel sorry for is Steve Goldstein. It must be terrible working with that grouchy old man. Also, yesterday I faxed you the exact WQM lineup. I should get a price, says Rudy. Well, I'm sure Rudy meant a prize, and if he would have written, he should have gotten a prize. Maybe we come. But he wants a price. Eight bucks. That's how much it'll cost you to uh, have us mention your name again on the air, Rudy. Eight bucks. He should get a price. Well, I don't think he did fax exactly the lineup. Did he? He was the one that came very, very close. I don't know. I thought somebody uh, faxed it exactly, and you thought they were an inside job? No, but it wasn't exact. There was okay. something like a little uh, whatever it was. I think I'm some kind of a displaced New Yorker. You're tripping. Exactly. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon line. It's a Wednesday. means noon to one. we got the big comedy bits hour. I'll find all kinds of good crap on here that we haven't played in a long, long time. And then maybe some that we have. In other words, I'll play whatever the hell I feel like it. So let me ask on, you. Yes? On Wednesdays now, is it going to be the 1 to 2? Why not? Okay. Doesn't that make... I mean, would, would we do noon to 1 no, and then no. we'd come back and do another hour? That's, that's what I thought we should I mean, only I somebody who'd be a real moron would do something like that. Holy cow! It might be, it could be, it's the one to two hour with Neil Roberts. I can't wait. And then, of course, it's the one to two hour! Hi, Vey. Yeah, I mean, your whole show wow. is based on 10 to 2 and all of these things that I've been doing for years. And this jackass, this simpleton, this guy with a big hole in his head named Greg Reed comes in there. Oh, dude, it would be really great to stick you on a 9 to 1, you know? See, and the excuse being that they built me the studio in Amsterdam, which I no longer use, and this one here in Toronto, uh, the only difference being that I gave them the, the the deal was the extra two years on a contract. That should have been more than enough. See what I'm saying? Right. In exchange for the studios. That, that should have been the deal. Not moving to 9 to 1 to try to fix the morning show that he had already broken. That's what I've been going through for like 16, 17 months now, boys and girls, trying to fix somebody else's mess. Never works. Never works. And finally, he realized... Finally, luckily, see how see how the Opie and Anthony thing worked out for us? Mm -hmm. See, if they wouldn't have gotten canned, if they wouldn't have done that uh, thing with a couple having sex in the church, uh, see, it's okay if the priest has sex in the church with the altar boys, that's fine. Well, they have a special room for that. But if they have a couple uh, simulating sex in the church, or maybe actually really uh, looking at it, then it's bad. 
So when they got blown out and they gave up totally on the format there on WNEW, and uh, I guess Pharrell got blown out at the same time, right? Right. When in doubt, they blew everybody out. So in you know in hindsight, that was a very fortuitous moment for us at QAM and for us on this show. I am not from New York. I hate New Yorkers. Good. See, we're stay, he's starting to make some good, good inroads right there for that black lady to call before. If Opie and Anthony hadn't gotten fired, they wouldn't have wound their way down here to rate Mo. That's a good point, too, and he'd probably be sore about that. We have 404 votes. Are you impressed, Boner Boy? He uh, wants to get the food. Thank you, Howie's. <laughs> he ordered another eight orders oh, of bacon. Now, well, what is that all about? You were telling me before that he keeps ordering, like, multiple orders of bacon. I, I mean... Don't get me wrong, you know how much I love bacon, but bacon is not good for it. It's one of the most uh, nasty things you can eat. I splat you not. He's ordering. He, that's all he eats. Why? I, we'll ask him when he comes back in from it with his sack load of bacon. Seriously, he ordered eight sides of bacon. Although, uh, I will say this to you. It's uh, one of my favorite things to eat, but I have no idea how to make it. So I never, I never make it at home because I don't know how to do it right. Probably not that difficult, huh? No, low heat. You cook it on low heat. And then you really need a toaster oven to finish it off, don't you? You know what they do in Wayne Arnold's, which is a genius if you ask me. They just put it in the deep fat fryer. It's not like it's going to get any greasier. Well, I hate to break the news to you, but I don't have a deep fat fryer here in my apartment. I know I know, probably most folks do, but I just don't happen to have a deep fat fryer handy. Well, if you had a fry daddy, you'd be dangerous. I see. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Here's Oakland Park. Hello. <laughs> Yes. What the hell was that? That was Pharrell. Oh, was that Pharrell? That was Pharrell Jr. Yeah, we do have a problem with all the billboards now. Maybe we have some people who would like to volunteer to take their Crayolas or spray paint guns or, you know, somebody drop them from a sky hook and hover over the uh, billboards. Change the times on there and get them right. We had a spy report yesterday that Moe's billboard there on the turnpike right by Griffin Road, the one that's right on the ass end of mine, uh, that his has disappeared. They're just like that, like somebody waved a magic wand and made Moe's uh, billboard disappear. Now, if they could make Moe's billboard disappear, you can only imagine what they're planning next. Well, they already did it to his hair. See, that's got to be unpleasant, you know. I mean, not not that he doesn't deserve the unpleasant fact that he's dished out to everybody else in spades. But it's got to be very unpleasant knowing what, I mean, he, nobody can be that stupid not to see the handwriting on the wall, what's going on here. And the fact that really and truly that uh, 6 to 10 a.m. is going to belong to. Since everybody from Miami is a New Yorker, screw all of you. See, there you go, to that guy. I mean, I'll bet your life on it that he'll be doing 6 to 10 before uh, too much longer. Yeah. Right. That's an easy one. Okay. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T Verizon wireless line. Anybody else in the audience would like? Would you like to bet George's life on it that uh, Scott will be doing six to ten soon on QAM? Probably have a long line of people who want to help you out. Here's Miami. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? It's a loyal Air Force listener. All right. How's it going, brother? Sensational. Hey, listen. I remember well, we talked almost a year ago from New Mexico, and I was uh, bitching at you because uh, they moved you back, and I had to wake up two hours earlier because they left right. you on the internet. This is a great day, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Because hopefully we can get rid of do 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 you know, pretty soon, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, also, Neil, another spy report talking about the... Uh, do 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 <laughs> The billboard's going uh, northbound on the 820th, the Palmetto. Yeah. You had one. It's gone. Yeah. Well, they probably ran out. In other words, being the cheap-ass outfit that they are, they they were there for a pretty long time, like uh, from February, March, about four or five months. So they probably don't want to you know, budget anymore for the billboards. Oh, yeah. They were there quite a bit. Well, I vote, I'm not going to take up much of your time. I voted for uh, it's a great change. Everything is beautiful. And uh, if I can take a shot to my brother. Well, that's a penis ball. Okay. <laughs> five, six, seven. They love Mickey, man. I'll tell you. They really yeah. do. Pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless line. I do have three bedtime stories here I would like to get to. I guess I don't have to discuss too much about Ottawa eases the uh, pot laws. No, what's to say? It's great. Federal yeah. government doesn't want Canadians to use marijuana, but yesterday softened the penalties for people who do, 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 do. While insisting pot is bad for Canadians, Justin, Justice Minister Martin Koshan introduced legislation decriminalizing possession of as many as 30 marijuana joints. All right. Yeah, they showed on the news last night, they showed the amount yeah, 50 up to 15 grams that would be, and again, not completely legal, but you could be only fined, you know, like a traffic ticket. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. 
But uh, And, of course, this hasn't completely passed yet, but they're saying that by the end of the year this will be the law. And then they showed the 20 joints, and they were interviewing some people, and they went uh, took the little bundle of the 20 joints and put it in front of this old lady, and she said, Yeah, that looks about right. That's, oh that's about God. right. Yeah, That's what she said. It looks about right. <laughs> For her, anyway. Oh, and I got another great story about another Catholic priest. I sure hope that is Yeah. Somebody 20 years he's getting. 20 years. All right. Oh, that's right. He don't listen to us, anyway. Here's a call from Deerfield. Hello. Hello? Deerfield Beach, yes, sir. Oh, I'm on. I didn't know that. I didn't even hear you. How are you, Neil? Great. How are you doing? Great. Uh, I personally am very happy that you're back on from 10 to 2. All right. Because after 1 o'clock, there wasn't much going on. Yeah. <laughs> you left the air. Uh, I tuned in late. How did that come about? That you got back on at 10. You know something? That's one of the great... <laughs> That's one of the great questions. No, no, seriously, people think I'm making this up. Uh, I, I, I have been bugging them for that for a long time, and I ba basically had thrown in the towel. I gave up because I kept getting a lot of lip service, and pretty much it was like locked in. I mean, there just didn't seem to be any way to make it happen. Could and be I come to get you back in Miami. I come back from Amsterdam on Sunday, and about two hours later, the phone rings, and there's Muff Lindsay on the phone, our operations manager, to ask me about what I think of the idea, and I said, "Oh yeah." Well, that's great. And they just, you know, of course, the morning show, they've been really uh, disappointed with, to say the least, to be very kind. And then they got uh, the opportunity to get Pharrell on there and stick him in the lineup. So they decided to uh, insert him in there from 8 to 10, which uh, solves everybody's problem. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. And in closing, I'd like to say, zippity doo da, zippity day, my oh my, what a wonderful day. Wonderful day. Wonderful day. <laughs> thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. We need that. We need to take that clip out of there. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Yeah, we're going to be singing that tomorrow, I'll tell you that, 10 to 2. And we need a lot of help from the audience out there because, once again, here's another radio maven jerking the audience around, you know. Like I said to the one caller before, and I've said it many, many, many times, people are creatures of habit. I've said it a lot of times today. About 30, man. They're creatures of habit. You know, they like to show it like the price is right. You tune in at 11 o'clock in the morning, right? Right. If you like the price is right, if you like watching the guy with, uh, you know, white hair, when is he going to retire already? Uh -huh. You know, I had off Memorial Day, and I'm sitting in there uh, channel surfing because cause with the time change, you know, I woke up like at 5.30 in the morning on Monday. And so I'm sitting there watching TV and watching, and there's Bob Barker. And I'm thinking, you know, I mean, not that I don't like Bob Barker. I mean, an old guy like him, he's entitled to get as much ass as he can. But uh, when is enough enough already? I'm telling you. I didn't even see Rod Roddy on, on there anymore. He's probably in Thailand again looking for those uh, silk suits. 11.13... At 560. Speaking of Rod Roddy, what a great segue. I fell into a bucket of crap again because the one thing about him, well, you know many things about him, but the most important one is he's <coughs> gigantic, fat. Like most Americans, huge, not good. You get sick, you get diabetic, and you die. That's right. Fat is not only ugly, but it's also so damn unhealthy. That's all the more reason that people get frustrated because they try everything but standing on their head to lose the weight. Balance for life could be the answer you've been looking for. Jeff Cohen at the Pizza Loft, old ponytail, lost a crap load of weight on it. Even the Beast, who used to be our friend, the Beast lost, uh, what, over 60 pounds on it? Right. Before we decided to turn him back to the wolves and just to get him out of our lives. And you can do the same or even a lot better. If you got got 100 pounds to lose, 30, 50, whatever it might be. There's no calorie counting. There's nothing to keep track of except filling out your little menu every week. You get two choices for each meal and snack, and they deliver right to your door every morning by 6 and a.m. like clockwork. A, a little black sack that's got your food for the entire day in there. Three delicious, fresh gourmet meals, two delicious snacks, nothing frozen, nothing prefabricated, no chemicals, no additives, no crap. And so you get plenty of food to keep you uh, satisfied and eaten all through the day. You'll never be going hungry on this program, and the weight pours off your body. So give it a try, because if you've been frustrated with all the other diet programs and haven't been successful or kept gaining it back, Balance for Life could be the answer you're looking for, getting you on the right road to getting your health back. Balance for Life. Call them today at 954 Five six eight thirty two twenty nine nine five four five six eight thirty two twenty nine. You'll start seeing results within just a matter of days. You can check them out on the web if you like. Balanceforlife.com. Live and local. This is five sixty. The radio is all yours now. QAM. Yeah, that was a rejoin. What was it? What I, the hell? What was that? I don't know. Tommy came in here and gave it to me. That was the freaking rejoin. It went on for like two and a half minutes. A minute 34. You better go in there and take a look at Tommy, okay, and see if he's got like real bloodshot eyes. 
more than usual? Actually, no, I think that's the problem. His eyes were actually white. No, seriously, what was that? That, that was not a rejoin. Maybe I, maybe I made a mistake and it was supposed to be a spot. I, I thought we had a lineup change, not a format change, huh? Well, what the hell was that? I, I kept listening, waiting for the, uh, I'm thinking, well, this must be a spot that must, was written on the log and not on mine. Waiting to find out what the goddamn sponsor was. Anybody know what the, uh, no. No, it was no spot. I thought it was one of those snappy new beer commercials that, uh, you know, they keep doing. Oh, look at this. This is from Howie. Now, not necessarily from Howie's restaurant, where we get our food delivered so often there, but from a guy named Howie who says, Bacon, put a paper towel on a paper plate. Right, he's okay. right. Can, I've done this. Put five slices of bacon on a paper towel. Put a paper towel on top. I recommend more than one. Place in more than what? Uh, one on paper top? towel, yeah. And on the bottom. Oh. No, the Place in a micro... Place in a microwave for one and a half minutes. Remove and discard towels and plate. Bacon will be crisp. Now, are you saying that that's all you... In other words, you don't have to put it in the fry pan first? Correct. If you put it in there long enough, and it'll take some experimentation with your particular microwave to find out yeah. the right time. I got a good microwave here. The one I got here is better than the one I got down right. there. Right. See, I, I like like three or four paper towels at the bottom because you will be generating a lot of grease. Uh, but, yeah, they do come out universally <coughs> cooked. And, uh, Are we generating and a lot of grease? <coughs> yeah, if I eat as much bacon as uh, uh, Boner Boy there is eating, I'll guarantee you, I'll be generating a lot of grease and it won't be on the plate. He leaves a trail. Oh, my God. Can you even begin to imagine? Wow. What is the story with that? Why are you so hooked now like on enormous, humongous slabs of bacon? What is that all about? It's easy to order, and I would think that these guys could order for me without thinking too much. Obviously, I was wrong. No, but that, that's not why it didn't show up. No. Well, yeah, now I got a bacon cheeseburger. Mmm, that sounds really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quit bitching. You got free food for crying out loud. Anybody lives under an overpass, he's bitching about getting free meals. Now he's starting to get porky about what we get, you know, what we bring him. Right. The, the morning guys, uh, out of the kindness of their hearts, sometimes they order for us as well. Us right. meaning and, and by the way, when we say the morning guys, we should point out we're talking about Zach, Zach and Robert exactly Reaper, Robert. not uh, the guys on the air. Not the but uh, if, they, if, they forget, if they forget to order Carlos's food, then he gets really surly. One of the classic Mo stories was the day that Doreen arranged to have all of that food come in. Where did that come in that day? It was for uh, Gildy's birthday or something. I have no idea. Now, you remember there was just a was ton it, of food out there. Was it from uh, what's the place with the uh, with the potato lot keys? No, it wasn't from Cork. Was it? At, okay. at any rate, it's not important where it was from. But there was the, the whole table out in the hallway there, which is like between our studios. Just laden with all kinds of really good stuff, too. And Mo went out there during a break. I wish I would have seen it. And started to grab it onto something. And, uh, oh, is this for us? And she said, well, no, they delivered it for uh, Goldie's birthday. Oh, well, if it's not for me, I'm not going to touch it. And he slammed it back down in a box and went stirring back into his studio. If, if my name isn't on it, if it wasn't delivered for the His Majesty, then I'm not going to touch it. Fair. Free. Yeah, fair. And fed to you too, Mo. By the way, how are you going to like getting up at 1.30 in the morning? Former Louisville, Kentucky, a Roman Catholic priest sentenced to 20 years. Oh! All right. A retired Roman Catholic priest at the forefront of the Louisville Archdiocese sex abuse scandal was sentenced to the maximum 20 years in prison yesterday for decades of sexual misconduct against children. This is in yesterday's Boston Globe, in today's Boston Globe. The Reverend Louis E. Miller, 72, pleaded guilty in March in Jefferson County Circuit Court to 44 counts of indecent and immoral practices and six counts of sexual abuse. The 21 victims are now all adults. Miller took for a full moral responsibility for his crime and said, I stand before God, oh, God to be judged later. He blamed his crimes on whatever mental illness I might have had. I hope someday I can have your forgiveness, Miller said. No. Miller could have faced hundreds of years in prison based on the law at the time. Most of the offenses were committed, but under current sentencing guidelines, 20 years was the maximum sentence. Miller's niece, who was one of his victims, said she was satisfied with the sentence. He'll be out of reach of children now. That was the most important part for me, she said. Oh, he's 72. We won't see him no more. He's in there for 20 years. He, he will not be on the outside again. I tell you, one of the great challenges of my lifetime, and I have to be crazy if I do it, the Marine Dowd column today, which it's on our website. It's a great column. And you know how she always likes putting in words that we never heard of before? At least I never did because I'm dumb. But this is one of the great tongue twisters of all time. In fact, even the name of the column, In a God of the Vita We Trust. You think I ought to give it a shot? Yes, please. Marine Dowd writes in today's New York Times, 
By ruling over Iraq, Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld hoped to deep six the 60s. The president was down with that. He never grooved on the vibe of the age of Aquarius anyway. Conservatives were eager to purge the decade's demons from tie-dye to moral relativism, from Hanoi Jane to wilting patriotism, from a governed to blaming America first, from Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds to the Clinton-esque whatever gets you through the night ethos. In their preferred calendar, more Gingrichian than Gregorian, American culture fast-forwards from Elvis's blue suede shoes to John Travolta's white polyester suit. Whatever else has gone awry in the Mideast so far, the administration may have succeeded in exercising American queasiness about using force and any vestigial image of the military as baby killers. As Robin Toner wrote in the Times yesterday, trust in the military is brimming up to 79% from 58% in 1975, according to Gallup. The tactical efficacy and moral delicacy of American forces in Afghanistan and Iraq solidified a trend. The children of Vietnam-scarred boomers trust the government, and especially the military, far more than did their parents, whose generational mantra was, don't trust anyone over 30. About 30, man. As Ms. Toner noted, a Harvard poll found that 75% of college kids trusted the military to do the right thing, either all of the time or most of the time. Two-thirds of the students supported the Iraqi war with hawks beating doves two to one. Mr. Bush runs a trust us we're 100% right regime, so we've got a young generation that wants to take it on faith and an administration that wants to be taken on faith. The beginning of a beautiful friendship? Maybe. Unless the White House politicizes 9-11 so much it squanders all that belief. Karl Rove's re-election strategy is designed to tug 9-11 heartstrings and his ads will be heroic images of Top Gun chasing down the bad guys. The president and his posse diverted anger over 9-11 to Iraq and now they're diverting it to Iran. The Bushies are playing off al-Qaeda terrorists they say are hunkered down in Iran, even as they overtook all the al-Qaeda terrorists crouching in countries the administration doesn't want to demonize, like Pakistan and Saudi Arabia. And the Hawks have turned to grooming Iranian exiles who are pumping out reports of secret nuclear labs. Sound familiar? After the war, the triumphal administration bragged about its Iraqi Taliban and Qaeda scalps, painting our enemies as being in retreat. Al-Qaeda is on the run, the president said in Little Rock, Arkansas. That group of terrorists who attacked our country is slowly but surely being decimated. Right now, about half of all the top Al-Qaeda operatives are either jailed or dead. In either case, they're not a problem anymore. But Al-Qaeda, it became horrifyingly clear a week later in Riyadh, was not decimated. It was sufficiently undecimated to murder 34 people, injure 200, and scare the daylights out of Americans everywhere. If Bush Cheney's 04's use of 9-11 begins to look like cynicism, then cynicism is precisely what it'll produce. Officials should stop speaking about threats and triumphs until they know exactly what they're talking about. They should lose their bewildering and unconvincing color code because orange doesn't communicate anything to anybody anymore. They should agree in a spirit of humility and true public service to stop getting obnoxiously in the way of the release of that 800-page congressional report that will provide what every American has a right to know about 9-11. As Michael Isikoff writes in Newsweek, the Bush team doesn't want the public to pour over the president's daily intelligence briefings like the one given on August 6, 2001 at the Crawford Ranch that dealt with the possibility that al-Qaeda might hijack airplanes or the parts of the 9-11 report that deal with our petroleum pals, the Saudis, and their recalcitrance in cooperating in the war on terror. The report, he says, discusses evidence that individuals with Saudi government connections may have provided the hijackers aid. The public should take its cue from Mr. Bush's beau idea, ideal, Ronald Reagan. As the Gipper advised, trust but verify. That's Maureen Dowd's column today. Pretty good reading, Neil. Oh! I'll give it about an eight and a half on a scale of ten. In Agata de Vida, we trust. Let's play In Agata de Vida three or four times. What do you say? In honor I'll of our big, it. our big schedule change for tomorrow. Oh! Ten to two. It's going to be exciting, baby. You can feel it. You can smell it. <laughs> All the way up here, I can smell it right through my freaking window, and they're closed. Twenty-eight past eleven at QAM. If your uh, hair is vanishing, if it's just uh, gone, if you got a big ugly bald spot that's getting bigger by the day, do something about it. Now you've seen examples of people who do stupid things. You know, there's nothing worse than being stupid. They put a mousy-looking piece on their head, and everybody in their world laughs their ass off at them, and, and they wonder, what's the joke? What am I missing? You know, stuff like that. Well, that's the way it is when it looks like a muskrat died on your head. And then there are the guys that want to drill holes in your head and have the blood dripping down your forehead. And then there are people who want to study those drain, dangerous pills that will really propitch you off because it won't grow your hair back. Charles Alfieri, though, has got the best-looking piece, the natural hairline system, available at any price in the world, which is why even the famous and the billionaires go to Charlie. For over 25 years, he's been doing guys right and getting rid of that bald spot. And he gives you that 30-day guarantee. 30 days is what he gives you, guarantee. About 30, man. If you don't, after 30 days, love the way it looks and feels and smells. If you're not getting all the action you can handle and then some, Charlie will give you a full refund. Don't forget to mention my name when you call. Mention the Rogers, get an extra 200 bucks off the regular price. Here's the toll-free number for the Charles Alfieri Studios in Fort Lauderdale, 1-800-321-2413. 
That's 1-800-321-2413, or log on to their website at charlesalfieri.com. We're Sports Radio 560, QAM. The dome must go. No war, says Cheryl Crow. Some Iraqis will die, so we better not go. Shut up, you fish, cause Baghdad will blow. Cheryl Crow is a stupid bitch. She's a burned out big mouth. Cheryl Crow is a worn out hide. Just shut your damn pie hole. Cheryl Crow is a whining hoe. She's a middle aged loser. Every day you can hear her whine. I wish somebody choke her. Cheryl Crow is a. But I want to watch the Yankee game. Get that on, Beast. We got the Yankees. And this scumbag is a Red Sox fan. The first guy I meet when I walk into this place, he says, yeah, dude, I'm a Red Sox fan. And I go, Fenway's for pussies. It's 1132 at 560. Well, let's give him like a little taste, you know. A little taste of Pharrell since he starts tomorrow morning, 8 to 10. And we go back to 10 to 2 tomorrow. Oh, oh. Spread the word. Run around with the sandwich boards on. Uh, this uh, fact's from Peter in Miami Beach. Congratulations on the change, time change. Thank you, Peter. Uh, he says, P.S., if you have a George Foreman grill... That's the best way to make bacon. Well, I do have that one down there, that one you gave me. Right. The lean green, uh, green, the lean, uh, spleen machine. Right. Chilling what machine. Do you, what do you do with it? I guess you, uh, put your bacon in it. Yeah. I don't have one, so I don't, I don't know. You don't have one? No, I don't. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you probably can't afford one, a guy like you. No. Five six seven oh five sixty. Many many open lines. We only got a half an hour to kill here. We got the Mad Dog at one. We got our big noon to one comedy bizarre. This is the last day on QAM of this schedule ever. You can bet Beaner's life on it. You can bet Greg Reed's life on it. This is the last day of this schedule. It's uh, done. It's like a cleansing, like a gigantic enema that we stuck into the transmitter. When in doubt, clean it out. If you want to see that new lineup, it's right there on the website, which we usually don't do a thing like that. But, you know, why not give ourselves a little bit of free publicity, right? Right. 461 votes. What's your take on the new QM lineup that starts tomorrow at 5 a.m. on the Mo Howard David Edited Show? Don't care. Only listen to Neil's show, 157, 34%. Love it. Big improvement, 151, almost 33%. It's okay, 47. Who's Mo Howard David at 45? Who's Scott Farrell, 37? That's why we keep playing those drop-ins. Got bubblegum stick on my shoe. So you know who he is. Uh, liked it better the way it was, 16, and I hate it, only 8. So you add those last two categories there, that's only 5%, 5.1%. Pretty small potatoes, wouldn't you say? Yeah. As, what? Well, especially in a town like in South Florida where it's so hard to please the public, you know? No matter what you do, you could stand on your head. Well, you know, it wasn't quite the right angle. It wasn't the uh, vision we were looking for. Whatever it is, it's uh, not easy to please. No. Nope. But this seems to be the uh, cat's meow, man. Right, let's just hope it's not one of those, uh, one of those cats. Civets. Civet cats. Here's Boca. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Pretty good, pal. <laughs> I just bring wanted it, bring to... Bring it. Bring it from Boca. I just wanted to uh, say uh, that Steve Phelps bit was great. I uh, I actually am the webmaster for uh, FireStevePhelps.com, and I was cracking up on that bit. So it's excellent. Be proud for that. Great. All right, have a good job, Neil. Thanks, Pally. See ya. <laughs> five six seven oh five sixty on a great Wednesday, man. This is a day that just I'm I'm gonna go out and eat a whole bunch of stuff, you know. For lunch, I'm gonna have like a whole bunch of lunches. What? What are you laughing about? I, I, just, I feel like having a party now. Don't you think that's appropriate? Yeah, I, I'm just cause, telling just because you. you guys are sitting there shoveling down a bunch of free food, I'm going to have I'm to not. pay for it. You're not? I already had I'm breakfast. I'm not. <laughs> oh, uh, brother! Pretty soon he's going to start getting as demanding as your good pies oh, on Joe Costello, no who demands food right. every day when he works in there. He doesn't ask for it; he demands it. So you should be here because they forgot his ketchup. Who's that? Howie's. They forgot the ketchup for the cheeseburger. The bacon Oy. cheeseburger. Mm. You should see the snit. You know what you I don't know do? what you he's gotta, talking about. You ought, have, you ought to have Muff tie him up. <laughs> which is one of Muff's uh, great specialties, by the way. He can make knots like nobody. Uh, he you tie him up, put him in a corner, and start shoveling chocolate bars down his throat. 
Do I dare admit what I bought yesterday? <laughs> oh, God, what? Those uh, score bites. Oh. Oh, and the worst news is I don't think I told you this yet, and I don't want to tell you. Oh. You know, it, it, there are times, I know it sounds silly, uh, and especially it's an excuse that fat people make, but sometimes you feel there's like a conspiracy. Like, remember I started talking about the score bites? Right. And then I found that Briars made that score ice cream in half gallons only, which I couldn't find, like in pints or quarts, half gallons. Well, guess what they have now? I give up. In, in my Dominion supermarket where they got like 75,000 different kinds of ice cream and all those concoctions, now they've got uh, Kit, not Kit Kat bars. What are the uh, other little, uh, what do they call those things? I don't know. Yeah, those little, uh, es- not Eskimo pies. Twix. The other, huh? Twix? Not Twix, the little ice cream square thing. Klondike bars. Oh, sorry. Now they got Klondike bars with uh, score candy in them. And they also have ice cream bars with score candy in them. This happened like on like a days after I discovered those score bites in the in the sack. And there's nothing worse than rolling over and finding oh. you got a bunch of score bites in your sack. It's a plot. Like that guy that called yesterday about his foreskin. He had the uh, he was saving the seashells. <laughs> he he saved good, seashells. Good place to keep them, I guess. Here's sunrise. Hello. Hey, nice. Yes, yes, sir. What do you say? I I don't know. Oh, and back at you. Here's Vero Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. What's going on? How you doing, sir? Good. Uh, what happened to your Anaheim Ducks last night? My Anaheim Ducks? Yeah, you've been on, you've been licking their ass since the whole playoff started. When did I ever say I like the Anaheim Ducks? I can't stand either one of these teams. Their ass since the playoffs started. I can't Neil. stand their team. Blow it out your ass, sir. In fact, Vero Beach is a perfect place for you. I've been licking their ass. You got the wrong guy, man. Anaheim Ducks <laughs> to them. In addition to which, it's one game. He must be one of those obnoxious assholes from Jersey. He must be somebody like uh, the sludge came downstream and he came with it to Vero Beach. Landed in the perfect place, by the way. Horrible game. I didn't watch more than like ten minutes of the whole thing. It sucked. The series is a death wish. The ratings are going to be in a minus column. And this guy's giving me crap because evidently he's a Devils fan. And by the way, it's nice to see that you're a fan of a team that can't even sell out playoff games. Oh, my God. A team with no, with no fans. There's no fan base. They want to stand the cup about uh, how many times in the last few years? About 30, man. Yeah. I always have a great team, just about. And there's no interest. Nobody cares. They're like right there in the middle of like 15 million people. And nobody still gives a crap about the devils. And he's giving me crap about, how about your dog? Yeah, lick this, okay? Go lick Brian Murray's ass, you idiot. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Neil, how are you? Great. First time, long time. All right. Uh, this is a great day. I agree. Uh, to make this day even better, they could get rid of Mo on Dolphin Broadcast and bring Zimfer back, too. That would be good. That would be excellent. They make the Dolphin games even better. Ain't going to happen, but that would be sensational. Although I should never say never because That's I never right. thought we'd get back to 10 to 2 again either. That's right. But great day. That's our next project, man. Exactly. Okay, thanks, pal. All right, pal. Bye. What? <laughs> I almost feel like a pulse, you know what? Oh, yeah. It's pretty rare in South Florida when you can even feel a pulse, especially after all of that rain and nasty weather and heat and humidity and, and just the mosquitoes as big as bowling balls. Are they talking about West Nile virus yet? Not yet. Oh, we are here. Oh, well. I mean, if there's any disease been invented, we're talking about it here. <laughs> if the mosquitoes don't get you, then the SARS will. And if that don't get you, then the uh, then the mad cow will get you. Right. We got something to get you. It's called getting even. Mad SARS virus. That'll teach that bush bastard a thing or two. Twenty till, and of course, if that don't get you, then uh, some of that bad weed will get you. Oh no! Now that they're all running around with handfuls of joints, handing them out on street corners. Spare some joints, Mister? No. Twenty till noon at five sixty WQM. We got our big noon to one hour today. It's a Wednesday, and then of course that's uh, and isn't that appropriate? The way this is all laying out, right. like magic. Yeah, it's just just like we just like we planned this. Which please don't give us uh, that much credit, especially at QAM. <laughs> But it's just all falling into like a like rolling into a bucket of crap. Amazing. Hey, I'll tell you something that's really good, not crap, and that's oleomet. It's good. It's good crap. Oleomet soft gels contain all kinds of good stuff in there, which are good for your health, and that's why more and more people, including me, are popping it in their big fat puss every day. Oleomet contains the best olive oil known to man. Super concentrated, loaded with health benefits for you. 
oleomed in your mouth every day can help reduce the risk of heart disease and high cholesterol. Plus, there are 14 different oleomed formulas that you can choose from, each one combining pharmaceutical-grade olive oil with vitamins, minerals, and herbals to support specific health needs from your bones to your blood pressure to your immune system. Just pick out the formulas that are right for you, and now they got three brand-new oleomed formulas, one to help you sleep, one to help you control that weight, and sell Q10 for your heart. Pick up some oleomed wherever you do your shopping. It's all over town now because more and more people are popping it. Pick some up at Publix, at Eckerd's, Walgreens, Whole Food Markets, Navarro's, or Sedano's, or order it online if you like at oleomedamerica.com. If you want more information about their products, what they can do for you, and where you should stick them, call toll-free 1-866-OLEOMED. That's one 866 Six five three sixty six thirty three for optimal health. Start popping some oleum in your puss right away. This is Sports Radio Five Sixty QAM. Just lie right back, they said to me, and fill up this bed pan. They put a catheter in me, and oh, it hurts, goddamn. I said, too late, I crapped myself, and boy, it sure does smell. <laughs> this lousy leukemia has screwed up my blood cells. Screwed up my blood cells. Then it got so tough to breathe, I couldn't stay alive. I wish I never signed a form that said do not revive. It said do not revive. I left my body and I started walking towards the light. But that light was the flames of hell. And this is where I will stay. I will burn eternally for writing the song for Gilligan's Isle. All right. 745 at 560 WQM. Don't forget, join George and Boca Brian, uh, Boner Boy and Miguel this afternoon, 5 to 7 at Treasure Island. No no uh, special attraction today, huh? No, just us. Just them. And the well, uh, Marlins tickets. Don't forget those. Like I said, no special attraction today. Anyway, Treasure Island off the Palmetto, just north of 122nd Street exit. Stop by to win those really nifty Marlin tickets. Anybody want some? No. And enjoy drink specials while you're there, too, at Treasure Island with our gang, with our desperately horny gang. And Miguel. I don't think Miguel is desperate. Just you? Horny. Only mentally. 5670560. Oh, we got, uh, look at that, one call on the board. We got uh, 14 minutes to kill here. Not a good sign. Not, and as a matter of fact, this is our last segment. Right. Before the big changeover. How momentous. I feel like we should do something. This is our absolute last segment of the uh, 9 to 1 uh, thing. And then, of course, because noon to 1, we got comedy bits, which is a phenomenal trend. That, that would be like playing all Beatles music on, you know, like on a oldie station Who or something. Who would do that? Here's Miami. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Hey, you going to 10 o'clock tomorrow? Yeah. Good. Congratulations, man. I'm even bitching about moving back to 10. Good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the Maticone is going back to 10 to 2. Rectum. 5670560. Oh, Boy, this is, I guess they're going to make me work for my uh, cash today, huh? This last segment. See, this is South Florida. I just got through saying this, which was a bad idea on my part. Never count your chickens before they call. No, you know how it goes. Oh, yeah. Believe me, you've had plenty of experience. Just when you think all of a sudden, they re but we have a nice even number of votes on the polo, 500. That's not too bad. You know what, Boner? Compared to yesterday, it's incredible. Although we did wind up with over a 1,000 votes, so maybe it's just, I don't know, maybe they're just all getting their lives back unassorted after the holiday weekend. They were getting back into town. We wound up with a very respectable showing there on our website. But you know me because I know South Florida, and after all of these years, you can never be too cocksure, if I can say that. No. I can't say that. Of what I got, and everybody's wicked hard. All those guys at ESPN with their fancy, hey, it's no more gossip hard, Kevin Millar. Why don't you shut up? Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. Five, six, seven, you know, just, just the idea of sitting down here tomorrow morning knowing that we're following him, a friend. A friendly voice, somebody who at least will give us a, cut us a little slack, you know, give us a, a chance. As opposed to hostile and hateful and obnoxious and, uh, and uh, trying to get George fired and me fired and Boner Boy and every, everybody else. How Greg Reed ever put up with that crap for a year and a half, that's the real mystery, okay? That's what a lot of people must be wondering, okay? I'm in maybe Texas. this, maybe this guy must have had a really a pretty solid contract, huh? Well, he had to get one to begin with. That's my point. Here's Delray Beach. Hello. Hey Neil, you know what the, the theme song for the for the for the station should really be? Remember the old uh, 
a Roman Brown commercial, a Here's the Good Friend. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, every time you play that Greg Reed cart, you know, with the asshole thing, you're insulting mine, Cookus. Just keep that in mind. And um, one last Greg thing. hates you. <laughs> that, that I don't mind. The, the, Greg I, hates you. I am angry as hell over this, About? this camel jockey's wife with the picture on the ID that somebody would take this to court. Oh, I, I saw that story, yeah. No, that they just can't say, hey, listen, you're in America. Everybody has their picture taken on the license. If right. you got a problem with that, don't drive. Right, exactly. And the ACLU gets involved. And i got to tell you, I'm blown away that it's, that, that it, that it, that it's gone to... <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to say camel jockey. That's yeah. all he wanted to say. There camel was jockey. the whole... Yeah, camel jockey, I just said it. Pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon line and 5670560. Those be the numbers, okay? Let's just keep this thing going another couple of minutes. See, I don't, I don't want to end on a down note. You know, that would be bad because I'm so up. I'm just like floating right off the top of my seat here. You're floating? Again? Again. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil, what's up? How you doing, sir? Not bad. Hey, I just want to ask you, which one of these Democrats here for 2004 you think is going to be able to take out Bush? Uh, At the moment? Yeah. None of the above. None of the above? How about Howard Dean? Hillary? Let's give Howard Dean a shot. A good old beady eyed Bobby Graham. Well, what if Hillary came and jumped into the fray? There, now you're happen? talking. You like that? I don't like it, but I think now you're talking. I think she might just <laughs> shock the hell out of you. All right, man. Hey, how about you hook me up with some Marlins tickets? Yeah, okay. We'll hook you up. 567 oh, 0560 with some Marlins tickets. He says it almost as good as Joe Rose. The Marlins, you know? He was in the building today, ran into him. Joe Rose was in the building? What yes. did he have to say? He said uh, he's slap happy. Is he really? I bet right. you he's ecstatic. In fact, he's got a big heart on. Yeah, I bet she does. Because there's nothing like when you get screwed over like uh, the morning show guys did. Right. And he was leaving anyway, but they did it in such an ugly, grotesque, Gregory to and really fail, fall on their ass. And that makes you go, yeah, yeah, that'll teach him. That'll teach you to screw me over, jackass. Oh, I guess what we're going to have today for the last time. Jackass? No. No, stuff like... Hi, this is Steve Goldstein, but you can call me Geldy. Whenever I'm in town, I listen to... Wait a minute, I am in town. It's the 12 to 1 hour. Stop! I mean, we got a whole bunch of different right. ones. About 30, man. And so I guess we'll have to probably do... Well, what's her name? If I can find it. Ileana, Rosanna, Dana, it's my favorite. They can oh, be sure. They can all and will all be redone. Just think he gets to be uh, paid again to do them. Oh, yeah, but we already got... We got a pretty good head start on... Um... Oh, don't tell me I don't have the Rosanna Dana. Oh, you must. You because after all, I just haven't come back here. Oh, there it is. Oh, thank. Oh. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Talk about breaking into a cold sweat because this is going to be the very, very last time we're going to be doing noon to one hour stuff. I mean, this was a bad idea, Greg. Why don't you just admit it? You should make an announcement since you're so good at recording those special announcements. You should record an announcement and say you want to apologize to Neil, to George, to Boner Boy, to everybody associated with the show, and especially the audience for screwing up our lives for like 17 months of absolute hell. I mean, it's not, not good enough that you, you know, you do a job for people and you make them a lot of money and you get them big numbers and you do what they hired you to do. No, that's not good enough. Now make me a malted, you know, poof, you're a malted, that, that kind of crap. Yeah, perform me a magic trick. Well, here's one. Right on your shoes, okay, Greg? But I'll tell you, uh, Duff and, uh, I bet you Duff and Clarence threatened to, sh to uh, give Jicka and Barry Jackass those naked pictures. I bet you that's the reason that he finally caved in. Don't you think? <laughs> with all your jokes, everybody's wicked hot. Go die with my girlfriend and go to the yard. <laughs> what is, you know, the one thing about it is I never understand what the hell he's talking about. Well, he was making fun of Bostonians, but, right. I mean, just in a more general way. He just, uh, there's just stuff comes out. You know, he just right. blurts stuff out. He's a kook. He's something. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil, what's up, man? How you doing, sir? Doing well. Hey, I wanted to give you a call, man. I'm uh, actually new to the area, just relocated from Chicago. And, uh, I know oh, you don't, don't unpack. Oh, you don't want to, don't unpack. I think, I don't know, man. I'm surprised I don't have to go through customs to live down here, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, In addition to which, you don't have the right accent at all. You'll, you won't be there more than six months. Yeah, well, I want to know something. Uh, so, so what's the deal with all the strip clubs down here, man? I've never seen a place with so many strip clubs. So many surf clubs? Strip clubs, man. Toes. Strip. Oh, strip clubs. Right, he's yeah. got a bad phone. Yeah. So many strip So what's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with it. I've just never seen anything like it, man. This place is crazy. Well, what else are they going to do? 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I've just never seen any place like this, man. The women you either, you the either go to the early bird dinner or you go to the strip club. That, there's no other choices. That's it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, I had to give you a call, man. I heard you on the radio. They, they don't have anybody in Chicago that's, uh, that, that's on your level. but uh, you're that, That's for goddamn sure. That, that's uh, really a sad comment, too, okay? <laughs> well, hey, man, you got, you got a new listener. I'm out. All right. Have a great life, Pally. So, yeah, he's out. He's on. He sound like a good guy, like a living and breathing guy. We got a new listener. Oh. All right. And when we go back to 10 to 2 tomorrow, we're going to have listeners up the ass. You know what I'm saying? Correct That's right. Doesn't it feel like we have listeners up the ass? It feels like something. I heard last week you felt like you had listeners <laughs> up your ass. That's the rumor <laughs> I was hearing. All the way over in Amsterdam, we were saying, all oh, those listeners are crawling like right up George's ass. Especially uh, Reverend Jones. Mm. Isn't it a shame we can't get Reverend Jones on just one more time before we... I guess not. Anyway, here's the way the poll is shaking out right now. The new QM lineup is, and there it is. It's all laid out for you there on our website, neilrogers.com. That's N-E-I-L-R-O-G-E-R-S. For people that are really stupid, don't know how to spell right. Why do they want to put a D in my name, huh? Why do they do they that? always do. Yeah. And that's in the Neil. <laughs> What's your take on the new QM lineup, we asked? We have 516 votes, which is pretty heavy duty, considering the fact that most people in South Florida already, uh, they're gone. They're gone anywhere they can get. Don't care. Only listen to Neil's show. 177, 34.3%. Our exclusive QM. That's more than a third. You believe it? You turd. Now it just changed again. And of course now, uh, 178. Love it. Big improvement. 169, 32.5%. Oh, 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 oh. It's okay. 55. Okay. Who's Mo Howard David at 51? Who's Scott Farrell? 41. Liked it better the way it was. 19 and hated 8. So you add those last two negative categories. That's still only 5.1%. So I think you've done a good job there, Clarence and Muff and whoever else is responsible for this. I don't want to say Greg because I, he was probably coerced, like I said. Probably naked pictures of him and uh, could be any number of suspects in that building. 11.56 at 5.60 WQM. Uh, we've done it. We managed to get through. We uh, finished off there with a brand new collar. Guy sounded like he was under the age of 100. Wants to know how come there's so many strip clubs. Probably a fag, but that's good. That's probably why he likes this show. You see how I attract him just like honey's right. uh, bees to honey? Nice hearing from you, honey. I can't anyway, wait. let me tell you about another great institution in South Florida that is Brandy Shoes. For over 25 years, they've been putting great shoes on people's feet, treating you right, giving you great, unbeatable service and selection, prices that are uh, unreal. And, uh, of course, they got all the top brands in the world. they got Rockports, Echoes, Mephisto, Timberland, Clarks, SAS, Floorshine, and lots more. Whether they have teeny, tiny feet or big, big ones like Tom Welling, who's our, his swelling. And, you know, I missed the last episode. Oh, it pissed me off. What happened? I'll tell you all about it. Oh. Anyway, they got uh, men's size 6 to 15 at Brandy's, women's 5 to 12, and widths from the very narrow to the very wide platypus style. And with over 40,000 pairs of shoes in stock in their 8,000 square foot mega store, you'll rarely hear, sorry, mister or ma'am, we just don't have uh, that shoe in your uh, size. They got it. Whatever you wanted, they got it at an unbeatable price, too. So take your feet to Brandy's. They're at 1290 North Federal Highway in Pompano Beach, open daily 9 to 9, Sundays 10 to 5, and it's a great time to buy naturalizers at Brandy's Shoes all this week. Selected naturalizers, normally 65 bucks, are only 29.90 to 39.90 right now as I speak. So stop in or visit them on their website at brandyshoes.com. Live, live and local. We're Sports Radio 560 QAM. I'm Frau Ileana Ross Leitman, and I like scrubbing my smelly gorilla ass with soap made from jewels and listening to the near Roche Amunista Hour. Sick lion! All right. I'm singing this song and I'm feeling kind of sad. I got my smile from mom, but my chest came from my dad. I got a body like a driving range mat. When it's cold outside, use my nips to hang your hat. I can blow in your ear, give you a lap dance. But you won't notice me till I get some implants. I need a guy who ain't got issues, like feeling up a chest. And finding tissues Guys say I'm cute They say I'm pretty I'm not one Who needs your pity I've got a nice ass And girl like a kissy But I can't get a man Cause I got no titties Got no titties 
The wonder bra is something I can't afford. When you lay on me, you'll swear you're on a diving board. When I turned 11, I started to get pubes. Now I'm 24 and still waiting on my boobs. Guys say I'm cute. They say I'm pretty. I'm not one who needs your pity. I've got a nice ass and pearl like kitty. But I can't get a man because I've got no titties. I've got no titties. I've got no Shatner's recording of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was voted the worst Beatles cover of all time. And now, the fab former Captain Kirk has a whole CD of fab four covers. It's Shatner Warps the Beatles. Baby, you can drive my car at warp speed, Mr. Zulu. You know I'm going to be a star. I hear they might bring back T.J. Hooker and maybe... I'll love you. Pick up a copy of Shatner Warps the Beatles and set your CD player on stun with this cover of Don't Let Me Down. Don't let me down. Like Priceline.com did when they stopped advertising. I'll get you, Priceline. You'll need to call Rescue 911 when I'm done with you. You can explore the galaxy and never find a collection of Beatles songs performed as poorly as only William Shatner can. It's Shatner Warps the Beatles. When I find myself in times of financial trouble, I just appear at Star Trek conventions and make ten grand just for shaking hands with a bunch of pimple-faced geeks. But then again, they are my fans. It's the Beatles cover album that boldly goes where no Beatles cover album has gone before. Unless you count those crappy versions Leonard Nimoy did. It's Shatner Warps the Beatles. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be, oh, let it be. I've been to Peter Smithson, Brockworth and Sauerkraut. I love a Polish pickle, I'll roll the barrel out. Yes. I put on the leader hose and I wear a funny hat. The sound of a crack tuba and then I'll show Clara there. It's a sound you won't forget. It's my favorite dance. I'm still alive, live for God. Fill your fears, light up. Stay alive, live for God. The cabbage rolls are good with sausage from a smoker. Stick your beer gun. It puts the lotion in the basket. It mixes it all up. It puts the lotion in the basket. It puts them both together. It puts the lotion in the basket. When the eyeball falls out, it oh. puts the lotion in the basket. Then it has to hose it down. It right. puts the lotion in the basket. It's what I have to get. It puts the lotion in the basket. I need to rub it on my breath. Yeah. It puts the lotion in the basket. I have to dry clean my skin suit. It right. puts the lotion... In the basket. I said, Doctor. I switched my BB in my legs. I said, Doctor. I like to dance around his waist. Mommy. 
Are the lambs quiet today? I said, Bobby, I want to look more like a wolf. My name is Buffalo Bill. It right. puts the lotion in the basket. It makes it for my skin. It puts the lotion in the basket. I hold my pee-pee in. It puts the lotion in the basket. How much does it grow? It puts the lotion in the basket. Yeah. I've got my skin suit nipple necklace. Eisner? Mr. Mouse? What the hell are you doing to me? What do you mean, sir? Why am I reading in the paper you're going to put a Disney theme park in Brooklyn? Well, sir, we're just scouting locations. Jesus, I'm scouting CEOs. You are killing me. But, but, but sir, look what we've done with New York City, oh. Times Square, 42nd Hang on. Street. Hang on. Remus! Remus! Turn off the vacuum cleaner, Remus! Get that bluebird out of here! Okay, boss. Hi, sir. But, sir, look what we've done with Midtown Manhattan. 42nd Street is incredible. Oh, you know what? Publicly, I supported that, but you took all the porn away. You're killing me. I'm going through Gaviscon like Pez. We're just scouting areas. Calm down. Listen to me, Buck Munch. Don't tell me to calm down. We got lucky with Lilo and Stitch, $128 million. Now, you're trying to ruin the whole network. What kind of programming are you running? Hang on a minute. Uh, Remus, yeah, you've got bluebird crap all over your shoulder. <laughs> Clean yourself up, for heaven's sake. And turn off the vacuum cleaner. Okay, boss. Good God. Sir, the network is fine. Why couldn't you come up with American Idol? Good God, you're still running James Bond movies. They're 60 years old. Why don't you just put Steamboat Willie on and be done with it? At least then I'd make a couple of damn dollars. <laughs> well, the, the movie division's fine. You mentioned Lilo and Stitch, and now we have the new M. Night Shyamalan movie coming out later oh, this summer. Oh, I know, signs. What the hell does that mean? Stop sign, yield sign. you got to start swinging some of these titles past me. Uh, Please. Uh, Remus. <laughs> Remus. Can't hear you, boss. I know you can't hear me, Remus. You're still running the vacuum cleaner. Yes, I'm right, boss. I'm running the vacuum cleaner. Get out of here, Remus, and take that bluebird with you. Uh, all right. Hi, sir. Y yes, sir? I'd be very careful the next time I started my car if I were you. What, what, what do you mean, sir? I'm about done with you. What? About done. What, sir? I'll put Hannah Storm in your job. But, sir, I'm You're sorry. terrible. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll put Remus in there. How'd you like to be president of Disney, Remus? Uh, oh, my. What a wonderful day. <laughs> Get out of here, you nutbag. Welcome back to the glittering pageantry of the Mo Howard and David Show. We have a full docket today. Yeah. Including the cavalcade of articulate athlete interviews. You know that pipe smoke is still at it. What? 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 Singing those songs. Making fun of me. They make fun of me all the time. I don't know why they don't adore me. Yeah, dear, everything will be all right, Mo. Get your hands off me, you fairy. You queer, you tube chomper. Real men don't touch, only during the game. Yes, master. They want singing. I'll give them singing. Get on a piano. Over there. Okay, Mo. Now, hit it. Back in my day, men were straight. Being gay is hip today. That's why I can't tolerate his guzzling gays. Sport holes weren't gay back You moron. What's the matter, Mo? My wig fell off again. Okay. All right, where were we? Sport holes were in gay <laughs> well, I'll take it from here. The guys that like to worship men. Good, Good thing we won't see falling nor wailing and not him again. Didn't need to soothe prostate. 
or to tickle Harry Taint. Jesus Christ, I really hate. Jizz Goslin Don't get in that Mercedes. Princess Di, we're begging please. Paparazzi's coming after you. You're gonna crash into a wall. No more rich guy for you. Oh, Princess Di is gone. Oh, Princess Di. Princess Di is gone. She's really gone. Went into a tunnel. Hello, wall. <laughs> From it is past noon at 560 WQAN. Yeah, it's, it's our around. ritual. It, it's what is around, it? Neil. Yeah. I'm over here, man. I'm hanging out with George and Carla. Yeah. I'm hanging out. I wish I was in Toronto at the Jazz Festival. They got great grub, great booze, great women, great, like, it just on the streets. They canvas it with jazz. Let, let me ask you this question. Do you, like, do uh, razor blades every morning before you get out of bed? Somebody said it's like castor oil, and they expected a fine scotch. I, I yeah. think it's more uh, Partagas cigars, Stromboli's, yeah. sex, and yeah. Jameson. Jack. By the way, speaking of sex, I hear you got the hots for George's, what I'm hearing. No, I'm not big on George's ass, but I'll tell you, uh, if I were to think of a great place to party with you, it would be Toronto. I always got a thrill out of calling Hockey Night in Canada. I called, believe it or not, of one of 11 out of 61 uh, losses, 11 wins, 82 games. The Thrashers won there one night, 4-1 to one, on a Saturday night in front of 5 million people, and they had followed me all day with a camera, this uh uh, whatever uh, it is, CTV or whatever it is up there, that does the that does the hockey. <laughs> CBC, that, whatever, yeah. all of those. Get it right, ones. man. All I know is they did hockey night in Canada. Did a they followed me all day with a camera, and so the last thing they shot of me was in the uh, press box, that Hall of Fame press box up in the you know famed uh, Toronto where the Hockey Hall of Fame is and the, the hockey. Foster Hewitt the, Memorial Press Box. And I put yeah the Foster Hewitt Memorial Press Box. I said if I wanted to die, I'd want to die in this place. And then I put a big L up on my forehead for Canada, and I said. Get Good night, losers. Your dollar's worth 50 cents, you scumbags. Eat that. And then my general manager was in the back of the elevator. Some guy said, hey, Pharrell, that must have been your Stanley Cup. I said, we win once a month. It was more than a Stanley Cup. I'm going to go out and get naked. I looked around. There's Don Waddell. And believe me, he wasn't smiling. <laughs> I had none of the problems in the NHL. I'm surprised Jigs likes me. He hates you. One guy I was at the Panther game. Some guy he, said, he, knows, he knows you're after his job, so I'd be very careful about the old man. Some guy I was in the press box one day, and this uh, writer from, I think he's with the Herald, I heard him, I was going to get popcorn up in the Panthers press box over there, and I heard a guy go, that's the devil, when I walked past. So I think I'm, I'm Satan now in, in the NHL. I don't know. Yeah, you sound like it. Hey, listen, uh, welcome to QAM, and uh, let me ask you one question before I do the break, because we do have some spots we got to get on. Yeah. I love your uh, studio, dude. Huh? Your oh, that's right. You're in our studio. Thick. Well, I mean, don't be a doing no, don't mung in our studio, man. I mean, but when, so when do you start six to ten? Uh, I, I haven't the foggiest idea. <laughs> thinking, did, you uh, notice, did you notice that nervous laugh? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, I'm redoing my kitchen in, in yeah. Boca Tica, and uh, yeah. I'm just I golf a little. I go to the Calder a lot. I drink. The a rumor lot. I'm hearing is we can only have one guy who lives in Boca on a staff. Uh, that might just be a rumor, Boca but that's what is, I'm hearing. It's so feta cheese there. It's so god. <laughs> <laughs> hush, hush. I hate everybody. I can't. I, I'm not even a block. I'm not even a block of federal. And I swear to God, I'm road rage central. I'm swearing at people. Yesterday, a truck overturned on the 95. Like 80 people were dead. I just went for the fun of it to look. Don't uh, slip on that red muskrat out in the hallway on the way out. Anyway, I love you. You're just unbelievable. I, I used to go on in Atlanta for weeks at a time talking about how foul and disgusting you are and that you were my hero. I can't believe I'm leading into you. We're going to make lots of freaking cash. See you tomorrow, sweetheart. I love you. Bye. <laughs> so is the show over yet or what? Yeah, let's go. Boy, oh, boy, you wind his <laughs> ass up, and he just, uh, he, he's ahead. unbelievable. He is just astonishing. And you notice that little nervous laugh when I said, when he's starting six to ten? I think that was the telltale. I got him. Ah. Yeah. 12.15 at 5.60 WQAM. If you're bald, don't call Fast Train because that's not their thing. If uh, you have sexual performance problems, if you can't get it up, don't call Fast Train because that's not their thing either. But if you're in a dead-end job working for a real schmuck, call Fast Train because that is their thing. Fast Train can have you fully trained and ready for a new high-paying computer career in just four short months. Call them toll-free today, 1-866-FAST-TRAIN. 
That's 1-866-FAST-TRAIN. they got locations in Miami, Kendall, Fort Lauderdale, and prestigious Pembroke Pine. So call them today and get yourself out of a dead-end job and get a, a real career and start making some big cash. Call 1-866-FAST-TRAIN. Don't forget they offer you job placement assistance, financial aid, convenient day, evening, weekend classes, so you don't have any excuses no more to be staying in a crappy dead-end job. Your new career is just a phone call and four short months away. Jump on that fast train today. Call them toll-free, 1-866-FAST-TRAIN, or check them out on the web at fast FastTrain.com. Live and local. This is Sports Radio 560. UAQAM. Hola. Hello. Hola. Tabi Motoro de Sirin. Who is this, the maid? No, this is the wife, Talia. <laughs> I like to speak to Tommy Mitolia. Hello, Tabi Motoro Residence. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Carl? No, 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 Talia. Talia. Let me talk to the devil. Please hold. Tommy! Tommy! Raha! Tommy! What is it? Rah, you got the phone. Oh. Phone. Hello. Tommy Metolia. Speaking. This is Michael Jackson. You lost your job. You lost your job. Hey, I didn't lose my job. I stepped down. Oh, sure. However you want to paint the picture, whatever you have to tell yourself in order to save some sort of face, you'll do it. But you lost your job. You know, actually, it's kind of nice to hear your voice. What? It's kind of nice to hear anybody's voice. What are you talking about? Yeah, can you hear that? That's my Mexican wife, let me tell you. It was cute for maybe five, ten minutes a day. But if i got to stay home with her, every day I'm going to go crazy. You're getting your just desserts, Tommy Metolia, the devil. All we do is eat Mexican food. Chimichangas, burritos, tostitos. i got more gas than Exxon. And you deserve to have the bloat. Listen, Michael, I'll resurface somewhere. I'll start another label. Sure you will. So you can destroy the career of other budding artists. Are we going to Chevy? Yes, honey, we're going to Chevy. Thank you very much, Chevy. All right. Oh, jeez. If it's not Chevy's, it's Chi-Chi's. If it's not Chi-Chi's, it's, it's, uh, what's that drive-in place? I don't know what you're talking about. I called to berate you. And all I'm getting is dribble and chimichanga. <laughs> Admit it. I was the reason you were forced to be fired. Right, I know, because I'm very, very, very devilish. Huh? <laughs> I want to live in America. I want to live in America. You're living in America. All right. Hey, look, Mikey, I got to go, okay? I got to take her over to Taco Bell. Chevy. Oh, okay. Chevy's, you want to come with us? No, I don't want to be seen with you. You are the devil. So at this point, I am finding myself having some sympathy for you. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I, I got to go there, Mikey. Let me tell you something. If I were to fart right now, half the neighborhood would go up. Bye-bye. Bill cigars and Monica's vagina. She lets out a giggle when he makes it wiggle. Monica is not the kind you can do in the behind. Rectum. But a cigar in her vagina, she don't mind. Well, he don't know where a stogie goes. I can see how there was some confusion between humidor and humid whore. And in Arkansas, the term cedar box means saw her naked. Stars report can lead to going blind. Now, Clinton, he was working hard. Late nights in the ovary office Working on a practical joke He took a Mac a noodle Put an exploding load in Poor Monica was blowing rings of smoke Bill cigars and Monica's vagina she lets out a giggle 
Every time he makes it we go Monica is not the kind you can do in the behind No But a cigar in her vagina she don't mind All right Oh, people feel that Hillary's been made a fool of by her husband Feel that Hillary was wronged up in the Lincoln bedroom, she was moaning, moaning. Al Gore was doing her with Bill's old bong. Bill cigars and Monica's vagina. She lets out a giggle every friggin' time he makes it wiggle. Monica is not the kind you can do it. Behind, but a cigar in her vagina, she don't mind. Oh, candy and sandy, yeah, Dutch Master is faster. Oh, yeah, what you gotta do is take a tip of Rillo and put it in a brim. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't like all the harper. Dum, dum, dum. Every time I see dum, 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 dum. that retarded dim witch dum, 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 on my TV. He's President of Republican muscle in and an articulate idiot. I don't know why they would want to shy, but now he's here. We're screwed the neck for years. <laughs> With President Thumbs. President Thumbs. 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 Oh, what I give to the vote once more and get to we all voted for. Stupid heat. Mindless drunk and rich kid. He's even dumber than me. He's President Dump. You don't care what it took. You got him in by hook or crook. The Christian right knows what's best for you and I, but have no fear. We've got a great leader. With President Dump. President Dump. President Dump. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. UAQAM. Now, I got to tell you, this this last break was one of the all time. Uh, now, was that actually on the air, the Treasure Island spot, or not? Yes, it was. Yeah. I didn't. It wasn't an audition, so you couldn't hear it. Oh, sorry. Well, that's great news. Ed Berliner, on Sports Radio, five sixty WQAM. Oh yeah, I got that something. I'm achy in my gland. Yeah, you, a naked boy, and I'm your nambler man. Cans. Rack them. Little boys, need to be with me. Cause I'm a Nambler man. Yeah, I'm a Nambler man. Yeah, I'm a Nambler man. Hey, little kid, I'll give you candy and a ride. You can sit on my lap and I will. Let you drive, let you drive, let you drive. Yeah, you shake your muffin when you wake. 
wear your little pants. Don't tell a little secret. Cause I'm your Nambler man. Yeah, I'm your Nambler man. Yeah, I'm your Nambler man. And when I shower, I'll invite you inside. And when I touch your little parts, I get high, I get high, I get high. Oh yeah, I got that something. I'm achy in my glands. Yeah, you, a naked boy, and I'm your nambler man. MTV presents Nine Inch Nails Unplugged. I wanna f you like an animal! Damn it, this thing's not on! How come this isn't working? Ah! You, tre you knocked over my bongo! Nine Inch Nails Unplugged. Only on MTV. The Middle Eastern world will be exploded. Saddam had people killed with the gas that we sold him. First time aggressor nation and the only one that's going. Now more blood will be spilled to get that oil flowing. Forget about Korea and the nukes they're toting at the right wing. is drilling it over and over into our heads. That Iraq has some weapons of mass destruction. Three thousand people killed are now forgotten. Let's exploit them instead. Hey, there's oil to be gotten. Going after Saddam to placate Osama. There's no longer mention of the name Bin Laden, but no one seems concerned. All come being complacent, believing every word of this cartel administration that controls us by fear through media manipulation. And the right wing is drilling it over and over into our heads. That Iraq has some. Weapons of mass destruction. The loss of civil rights is the price that we're paying. We're all suspects now, not the Ashcroft is saying. I have nothing to hide, table talkers all are saying, blind obedient cattle don't have any reservation, out of provoked battle and world annihilation, old regimes must fall in Halliburton installed, with no objection at all, and the crap don't have the balls and the right wing is drilling it over and over into our brainwashed heads. Iraq has some weapons of mass destruction. Only Iraq has some weapons of mass destruction. Romance, but she's 
Time for Leave It to Ozzy, starring Barbara Billingsley as June Cleaver, Hugh Beaumont as Ward Cleaver, and the irrepressible Ozzy Osbourne as the Oz. Oh, good morning, Ozzy. Oh, f*** you, Mom. Oh, dear. I can see someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Oh, God, bloody hell. I can't believe how much my head hurt. What the f*** is Sharon? Sharon! Who's Sharon? Is that one of your friends from school, dear? Why, good morning, Ozzy. Oh, f*** you, Dad. Get out of my face. Now, Ozzy, that's no way to talk to your father. <laughs> Say, son, what have you got planned for today? What do you mean, what have I got planned for today? What? I don't know. Since when does the Prince of Darkness have to hand out a f- itinerary? <laughs> I'm... I'm going to go bite the head off of that boss at Eddie Haskell. How's that? Oh. You have fun now, okay, Ozzy? Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Go f*** yourself. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Leave It to Ozzy. Tune in next week when you'll hear Ozzy say... F*** off, you f***ing f***. 20 till uh, 1 at 560 WQM. I'm still recovering from that uh, previous break when you put Pharrell on. Yeah. Because I've been playing off the tape here, and it was like one of those, is it real or is it memory? Uh, I, I know. That was the idea. I see. Well, it was, I sure had me fooled. But I got him back with that the 6 to 10 thing. It was good. I think he gave us the answer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> hey, homeowners, is there anything worse than venturing out to your backyard, especially on one of those days when it's 100 in the shade, to hop into that once beautiful pool and you find that it's stained, it's dirty, maybe it's even cracking in the pool, too? When your pool doesn't have to be a mess, no mo. Call our friends at Atlantic Marsite. Atlantic Marsite specializes in refinishing pools, bringing them back to life, brighter and more colorful than ever before. And now Atlantic Marsite's introducing something new and great called Atlantic Blue Bright. For over 12 years, Atlantic Marsite's beautified pools with the ever-popular Diamond Bright. And the makers of Diamond Bright have developed Atlantic Blue Bright exclusively for Atlantic Marsite. Atlantic Blue Bright promises to leave your pool with a richer, more colorful appearance unmatched by anything on the market. In fact, your friends and neighbors will be convinced that you got yourself a brand new pool. That's how good it's going to look. Licensed and insured a real construction company, and they use full-time employees, not subcontractors that just came off a banana boat. Atlantic Marsite's a family-owned and operated business that thousands of people have known to come and uh, trust and love. And they serve Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. Atlantic Marsite also performs expert deck renovations, custom lighting, pool heating, and exotic and erotic water features, too. So enjoy all of this summer in your own backyard. Call Atlantic Marsite Tool Free today and be sure and tell them old Neil told you to call 1-800-558-8883. That's 1-800-558-8883. Atlantic Marsite truly is a pool's best friend. Live and local. This, this is 560. The radio's all yours now. QAM. The WQAM is proud to announce Howard David is dead. Hey, they killed Howard. Forget about it. Consequently, after days of intensive shock therapy, management emerged with a brand new lineup for the vacationing Howard David. Starting tomorrow, wake up with the Joe, Mark, and Son Show. Radio the way it was intended to be, with periodic sports updates by Gildy. Yeah. That's the Joe Mark and Sud Show, now on 560 WQAM. 
first, it was the classic animated Disney adventure, Pocahontas. Now, hot on its heels comes the live-action sequel. Richard Simmons is Pocahontas. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Camp Wanafella, the first alternative lifestyle summer camp for adult men. Now, I'm your head counselor, Pocahontas. Are there any questions? Yes, your name's Pocahontas. Do you have a little Indian in you? No, but the night's still young. Wow, wow, and seriously. Now, let's get some sleep now. Tomorrow we'll be up at the crack of dawn. Now, by the way, have you met my brother Don? Don, stand up and introduce yourself. Richard Simmons is Pocahontas. And at Camp Wanafella, the campfire isn't the only thing that's flaming. Oh, okay, guys. Oh. One more weenie and I'm gonna gang. <laughs> Where his wailing flowers gone? <laughs> pack corn and I don't care. Give me pack corn. All right. Now I'll show you how to make smart. First, you pack the fudge. Oh, then the marshmallows. And now, Graham. Come here, Greg. <laughs> oh, God. You'll hear fascinating campfire stories. Well, of course, my great uncle was a little big horn. He was very close to General George Armstrong Custer. They were actually dating toward the end. <laughs> their last evening together. The general was quite aroused. I guess you could say my uncle was there for Custer's Second to last day. <laughs> On the big screen this summer, it's Polka Heine, co-starring Jim J. Bullock as Little Big Swallow. Wow, I sure do enjoy the great back to... <laughs> I mean the outdoors. <laughs> oh, the camp bus is full. Polka Heine, can I ride in your Jeep? Sure. Have you ever ridden in a Cherokee? <laughs> no, but I once French kissed an Iroquois. <laughs> Polka Heine, also starring Dom DeLuise as Sitting Bull, Charles Nelson Riley as Spitting Bull, and Chuck Berry as Squatting Bull. <laughs> also starring Snoop Doggy Dog as Geronimo Fo. And featuring a special cameo appearance you won't want to miss. Hey, isn't that famed attorney Robert Shapiro? Yes, I am a counselor here. But you're not an Indian. Yes, I am. What tribe? What else? Sue. <laughs> <laughs> your turn cool and make it an Indian summer with Polka Heine from Touch School Pictures, rated TV 13. <laughs> their songs provided the soundtrack for a whole generation, and now they're finding a whole new audience with a CD that doesn't sound a whole lot like anything they've ever done before. It's the best of Crosby, Stills, and Cash. Don't you know we're riding on the Marrakesh Express? Experience deja vu all over again when Crosby, Stills, and Cash unveil a whole different take on this classic tune. Our house is a very, very, very fun house. With two cats in the yard. It's a CD jam-packed with all the songs you'll want to teach your children. Like... I am yours. You are mine. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash for Crosby, Stills, and Cash. You know, we used to sing like a couple of boys named Sue. But now, the cash register's ringing because... We're singing in a whole new register. You are what you are, and you make it hard. The best of Crosby, Stills, and Cash. Walk the line straight to your local record store and pick up a copy today. Put on my five on ones and I headed for the street. Just checked out the best of Hustler and I'm starting to feel the heat. <laughs> Suddenly I see people checking out my butterfly scene. Yeah, I got a first class riser. It done pitched the tent in my jeans. Now I'm sporting a woody. I'm 
finding it impossible to conceal. I'm spotting a Woody. All right. I feel like an axle without a wheel. So the ghost of Elvis, he was sporting one too. Followed him up to the gates of Graceland just to see what he would do. His ghostly face was beaming as he headed for his room. There's a pretty little ghost, she's waiting for his post. Down in the jungle room, we're spawning what is in Memphis. It's nearly impossible to conceal. Spawning what is in Memphis. I feel like an axle without a wheel. Spawning what is in Memphis. It's almost impossible to conceal. Spawning what Twelve fifty two at five sixty WQM. How's that poll coming? Six hundred and forty three votes, not too bad. Woohoo! <laughs> What's your take on the new QM lineup that starts tomorrow morning at five on the Mo Howard uh, David and the uh, Geldy show? Six hundred and forty three votes. Two hundred and twenty three don't care, only listen to Neil's show. That's thirty four point six percent. Pretty heavy duty. Uh, love it. Big improvement. 212, 32.9%. And the goddamn thing just changed again. Uh, it's, uh, okay. 65. Who's Mo Howard David at 65? Who's Scott Farrell? 47. Liked it better the way it was. 22. And hate it. 10. So that's like 4.9%. The last two negative categories. Not too bad. Pretty award weaning, if you ask me. Don't forget, spread the word. Tomorrow morning we're on 10 to 2 again for, uh, the rest of our lives. Here's a place, if you're fat, that you're going to love shopping in Delights of West Boca because it's your superstore for the Atkins diet and all the other low-carb, sugar-free diets. The whole store is about you and the stuff you're looking for. And right now they're introducing their new almond snack cakes by Control Carb, and they come in blueberry, banana, or classic almond, each serving only one effective gram of carbs, or sample of Light's new chocolate raspberry muffin with only one gram of carbs. And if you'd like something to crunch on, try one of their three new flavors of low-carb racket chips. So whether it's the Carbolite ice cream, breads, rolls, cheesecakes, chocolates, pasta and sauces, or any of the other 600 low-carb foods you're waiting uh, at Delights, they're all waiting for you. What I just say, Delights of West Oak is the place. And you can always try it before you buy it, too. They have a knowledgeable staff that knows dieting inside and out. And they're open every day, seven days a week from 10 to 10. And at Delights, you'll find the most complete line of Atkins Brands products in the world that are always, here's even better news, 25% off all day, every day of your life. Don't forget, the Atkins diet is rated about as good as it gets, so head for the number one low-carb, sugar-free store in the universe, Delights of West Boca. You'll find them on the northeast corner of Glades in 441, right next to Boston Market, or call them toll-free at 1-877-LOW-CARB. If you like, check them out on the web at lowcarb.com. Don't forget, there's only one Delights of West Boca. It's your official Atkins Retail Center. We're Sports Radio 560, QAM. And... I saw Jesus oh. on the stick of hollow bars. Boy, I saw him on my pop-up toaster in the seat beat of my car. All my friends think I'm nuts down at the redneck bar. Yes. Cause I saw Jesus on the stick of hollow bars. I saw him. Shaving green, so I left it on my face. <laughs> when I went to work, I looked like a jerk, and I was fired in the street. Driving home, I was all alone, thinking someone's playing tricks on me. But in the rearview mirror, I could see Jesus staring back at me. Yes, I saw Jesus. On the stick of hollow bar I saw him on my pop-up toaster And the seat beat in my car All my friends think I'm nuts Down at the redneck bar Cause I saw Jesus On the stick of hollow bar Yes, I saw Jesus On the stick of hollow I saw him on 
the side of a taco and the hubcap on my car. I saw him in a bowl of spaghetti and the side of the smuggler's jar. Yes, I saw Jesus <laughs> on the snake of Hollabar. Everybody, I saw Jesus oh. on the snake of Hollabar. I saw him on my pop-up toaster in the seat deep of my car. All my friends think I'm nuts down at the redneck bar. Cause I saw Jesus on the street of all the law. Oh, Lord, there he is again. Wow, what an ending to a, uh, what is it, 17 months? Something like that, right? Of pure living hell, back-to-back -back with the Molemeister. Don't forget, new lineup starts tomorrow morning, so we got coming up next the last Jim Mandage 1 to 3 ever show. Got it? I feel like we should play the fanfare or something. Yeah. The fanfare. <laughs> That's enough. Oh. And uh, this was our last 9 to 1 show. Thank God. Oh, 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 oh. Don't forget tomorrow, back to 10 to 2 as we get our life back. Bye, bye, bye. The Neil Rogers Show on 560 WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Friends with that loser, too.